Harold, I'm afraid I need you to come with me. Oh, hi, Major. What's the matter? Is that leak bothering you again? It's your fine, your unpaid fine. I had a fine? You still do. Tubing without the proper credit on your tube card. Can you settle it now? Uh, no. But, but wait, I I'm sure I topped it up. Improper tube card management, Halibut. You surely recall that since last week, the Energy District tubes require your tube card to be topped up with blue credit. If an onward journey to the social district is intended, in addition to the usual weekly turquoise credit. Wait, but only last month it was a green. I don't make the rules, Harold, but the rules make me. Now let's get you over to the fine secretary so we can all get on with our day. fell foul of the end user insufficient funds clause. I'm afraid if you really can't pay, you're going to have to think of someone who can. I guess that means we'll have to wait for the professor again. Who knows what she sees in you? Right, I'm needed elsewhere. There's a disturbing rise in the number of people traveling without the appropriate tickets recently. I hope for both our sakes not to see you again soon, Harold. So, what are you in for? Oh, I'm just here for the Great Company. Aren't you a little young to start working for Allwater? What? No, I meant because it was a joke, doofus. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Uh, could you let me wait in peace now? Oh, sure. Will do. Have fun. Felix? Hi, Ma! Uh, look, before you say anything... Whatever your excuse is, it'll have to wait. Busy, busy times. Mr. Secretary, please charge whatever Felix's fine is to the company tab, please. Of course, Mrs. Van Der Vaart. Have a pleasant day. You too, Master Van Der Vaart. Freedom! Have fun, Harold! Branded from the municipal freshwater clarification. We reluctantly interrupt your daily business for an important... <clears throat> for some important information for all inhabitants of the Fedora One. Dear people, crew, and company, we seem to have discovered something super cool. Please do consider to congregate tonight at the Agora Theatre to... for some important information. Oh, Harold, here you are. I've been looking all over. Get your buns to the lab, if you please. I do beg your pardon, ma'am, but there is still the matter of an outstanding fine for Mr. Halibut to find a proxy for. A completely reasonably priced and fairly applied fine, if I do say so myself. Sir, please do not cause me further consternation. Just put it on my tab as always. Come on, Harold. Got water. Mr. Halibut, you'll need this before you go. A ticket home? Yes, and only home. It's not valid for any other routes. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Secretary. And your tube pass should be unlocked again within 24 hours. So you'll be back to the luxury of fully automatic tube travel eligibility approval once again. I can't wait. Every time I need you, Harold, it's something else. What's wrong with you? I can't handle your shenanigans while we're in the middle of this mess. I know, I know. I'm sorry. Next time... This must have an underlying cause. Hmm. I remember when you were still in school and your teacher telling me about how you would just stare out of the window, oblivious to her even shouting at you. It's like you've never snapped out of that baby. I was never in a daydream, just the other stuff was boring. Harold, I'm not sure which is worse. The idea of you living with your head in the clouds or never being excited by life. Only boring people get bored. I'm sorry, Professor. Distance.
destination chosen. We hope you enjoy your warm water tube system journey. You have arrived. Is the Please exit the tube in an orderly manner. We hope you travel with us again soon. But why isn't the line active? What needs improving? A man has a right to know. I don't know the exact decision-making process that led to this, sir, but I assure you... Destination decided. Enjoy the view. But Harold, I'm tired of chasing after you like you're a stupid butterfly. Hang on. What's a butterfly? That sounds silly. A butterfly is an insect from Earth. They had beautiful patterns on their wings and drank pollen from flowers. I suppose you could say they often appeared in uh, extra natural moments in life. On the other hand, they were terribly inefficient, flighty, overly trusting and delicate. Ergo, you never take responsibility and I never know where to find you next. I know I drift off a bit sometimes, but but all water raised the tube fares again, and they never announced it properly. This time it really was an honest mistake. Plus, there was this woman who- Quiet, Harold. We don't have time for your flights of fancy right now. There's important work afoot. Oh yeah. Have you checked the blockage in the filter station yet? And did you need to feed the fish too? Ah, uh, yes, those two. I'm on the case. Bye, Professor. <sighs> Aren't you forgetting something? Oh, uh, I'm sure those are all my tasks for the day. You seem to have waylaid your PDA. It really is a wonder you get anything done around here. Ah, thanks, Professor. It's got a life of its own. Strangely enough, I noticed you hadn't added your daily task list to it. And I don't want to have to remind you about them again. Oh, thanks. Let's see. Uh, so I access the list. It'll come back to me. Just go to the four selection buttons. Okay. Um, where were they again? The upper right of the pad! Ah, yeah. Top of the four buttons, right? Cool. Then I use the navigation knob to highlight... and then hit the bottom button. Precisely. Okay, great. And it's the rightmost button to go back, right? Indeed. Now hop to it. And I'll see you at the Agora Arcades when you're done. Fred, it's out of food. Better ask Cyrus about this. Hey, Sai. Oh, hey, Harold. Uh, what's going? I, I mean, uh, how's up? Just doing my usual rounds. Trying to clean the fish and feed the filter station. Super nice. How are the fishies doing? They're swimming away. Looking good. 
but there's no food left in the fish feeding machine. Ah, lovely. Yeah, I've been thinking about fish a lot recently. I've been wondering if, you know, even fish blood is such a good fertilizer, what does slow release phosphates and nitrogen? But we don't want to hurt fish. If samples were taken, we could somehow synthesize the- Sai, Sai, that sounds very interesting, but what about the food for the fish themselves? Hmm? Oh, yes, sorry, Brad. Didn't I restock the other night? <sighs> Must have just thought about it. I'll have to formulate some more. You make the fish food yourself? Oh, I do indeed. I'm working on a new recipe at the moment, in fact. But, I mean, can fish even taste? It's not just about taste, it's about nutrition. We want their gills to function optimally, don't we? And their pigments to express as vividly as possible, a bit like flowers. Sigh, sigh. New fish food would be great. I'm sure they'll love it. Well, I'll get right on it, promise. Yeah, I think I have a test batch. Uh, yep, here. A uh, little taster to keep them going. Well, you should try some too. Ah, uh, thanks. I'll let you know what they think. Oh, did you see that? Was that fish real? Oh, I'm not sure. I mean, even if it wasn't, their methods are getting way more sophisticated lately. Yeah. Mm, I kind of look forward to seeing what stunt they're going to pull next. Me too. As long as I don't have to clean it up. Do you remember their first messages? Ah, uh, yeah. Wasn't it something about Fedora not being able to take off being a conspiracy? Yes, on all those little flyers. Handwritten, too. What did that fish message mean, do you think? Hmm, I guess something about exploring the planet? Didn't it say what's out here? Ooh, like they've hidden something. Maybe they think the ocean is a conspiracy, too? Fishy, your little dishy is now served. Okay, Herald bot diagnostic report. Scanning, scanning, all tests completed satisfactorily. Enjoyment evaluation, minimal. Energy levels depleted. Recharging required. Next destination, Agora Arcades. Isn't this working? So typical. I suppose the ticket reactivation is still going to take a while. I said snow. Ready to go? Ciao, Harold! Chris! What brings you here? Would you guess that the tubes are down again? Strangely, yes, I can believe that. Does that mean school is out? Yep. The bambinos are happy and I don't mind the time off. But if it goes on much longer, they'll forget everything I've taught them. Won't they do their homework? Gunter will. Anyway, the whole social district is off limits right now. So at least there won't be much else for them to do. Is that why you're hanging out here? Mostly. It's just kind of cozy here, though, you know? Hey, are you going to watch the announcement? Yeah, I meant to go to the arcades for it, but my darn ticket is playing up. Mind if I watch it here with you? Of course, be my guest. Not that I actually live here. Oh, it, it started. Hi, let's see what all the fuss is about. We chose the stars. 
not instead of the earth, but because of it. We chose sacrifice and responsibility. Uh, well, we didn't, I guess, but our ancestors did. And we wouldn't be here if they hadn't. Uh, left, I mean. We'd be back on earth. And where would that have got anyone? We may not have ever seen our home, tasted its air, or gazed across its boiling seas, but we remember it. And then we made a new home, even if it wasn't quite what anyone had in mind. And one corporation over all others helped make that possible. All water. On that note, I'd like to introduce Madam CEO Brenner Castlechop. Good day to you all. As you may know, I am Brenner Castlechop, the CEO of All Water Corporation. More importantly, I'm a citizen of the Fedora just like you. And it's my unmitigated pleasure today to show you what you're about to see. Join me in reliving and celebrating the remarkable journey we've been on together before we unveil the next step of that journey. It may have started with one man, but it took the hearts and minds of many more to make the dream a reality. That dream began at the height of the Cold War, when the world was on the very brink of annihilation. He conceived of an arc-like spacefaring ship, financed by the wealthiest countries, families, and private institutions such as the Schlippmeyer Foundation, as a gesture of global care for the human race. That ship journeyed for 200 years, was home to five generations, and sailed past many solar systems, making fascinating discoveries along the way, like the bacteria that are now responsible for our energy supply, or the mineral samples we took from planets along the way that allow us to build new materials. We had difficulties to deal with too, such as surprise asteroid fields, periods of hopelessness, and the unpleasant, albeit brief, alien infestation. And of course, 120 years after launch, our last message from our beloved Earth in its final moments. After 200 years, we finally arrived at our destination only to find that the promising, watery planet contained no habitable landmass and dense, toxic gases in the atmosphere. Hardly the second Earth we had hoped for. It wasn't long into our new search that the solar winds came. Maybe our ancestors couldn't have possibly known, or maybe they could. But they would cause our ship to crash, just like Icarus, but with worse luck. Either way, we can be thankful for a soft landing and good waterproofing. Wasn't that a wild ride, huh? We've achieved so much aboard the Fedora, but we've never stopped thinking big. We had the idea to make sure we weren't missing out on anything going on outside. We're in a whole new galaxy, so we should be listening to see what the local news is. So we hatched a new plan. A state-of-the-art, deep-space radio boy capable of keeping itself afloat and slowly circumnavigating our watery new home while scanning for signals and interesting cosmic gossip. And, wait for it, yes, we're delighted to announce it's floating to the surface right now. That's right, the boy will be in position in another few hours. Big congratulations and thanks to All Water for making this possible. I'm excited to see what we pick up. That was some announcement, huh? Sure, makes for some nice gossip. But I think they should fix the tube system or upgrade the TVs, eh? For this fancy boy drama, eh? Yeah, that'd be nice. What if there really is nothing else out there? Exacto mundo! We should be focusing on inner space before outer, huh? <laughs> yeah, man. Speaking of inner space, I hope the tickets are working again tomorrow. Que claro. At least I brought some homework to Mark. Those bambinos will forget everything at this rate. And you've got your trusty couch. Yep. We've gotten to know each other well. Okay. I'm gonna get some sleep. Buona notte, Chris. Buona notte, Harold. <laughs> Good evening, everyone. Please.
Please remember, the old water tube system will shortly be closing for the night. Get snug, not stranded. Oh boy, what a day. Here's hoping tomorrow's a bit more relaxed. I could do with a day off. All this running back and forth for people is tiring, man. But, Agent Harrelson, that's what they pay you for. Don't let us down now. did you think of that announcement? It was quite fantastically self-aggrandizing. Yes, it did go on a bit. The boy seems cool, though. Indeed. I'm sure it'll make a great source of distraction. Now, if you're quite ready... Sure. Um, ready for what? I made a breakthrough discovery at the Arboretum last night. Do you remember the last batch of bloomy rocks? Oh, the really small ones from the last intake? The ones with the strange shapes and the little holes and... The blue ones, yes. Turns out their surface composition doesn't just give us clues about our immediate aquatic environs. I think they've picked up some influences from outer space as well. Take a look through the microscope. You'll see what I mean. Just remind me exactly how that thing works again. Harold, are you fooling me? This will be the last time I explain it to you, so for once, pay attention. You need to open the hatch first. Now activate the switch next to the bore to open the sample shelf. The rock you want is in the container on the lower right. You remember your left and right? Bring it to the left and it into the hatch. Et voila! Check the microscope and finally you'll see what I mean. The one you're looking at now seems to have picked up radiation from our nearest sun there's a particular mark for each time there's been a solar flare. I can only see one mark? That's the problem. There isn't enough of a recording on this one. I dated it to roughly 40 BC. So we need an older one for... Exactly. Older ones, ideally. Although I doubt we'll have much luck catching more of them by chance. Oh, yes. We have to figure out when there's going to be a gap between flares. Flares cause the solar winds. A gap between solar storms is our only window for leaving this place. I need you to look into this, Harold. If anyone on board has an older rock, we need it procured. Yes? But if we're not going to be able to catch one, where am I supposed to start looking? You could start at Tommy's store. You and I both know that guy somehow gets hold of whatever those filter stations spit out, and then sells them at an outrageous markup. Good evening, Jean. Nice to see you, Bridget. Is the sample in the microscope? I'm really curious to inspect it. Yes, you definitely should. Harold, when you see Cyrus, could you give him a message for me? Sure thing, Professor. Just ask him, how are the details coming along? Okay. I will ask him, but, um... Yes, yes, I know. I could ask him myself, uh, but didn't you stop to wonder why I don't want to? I just did stop to wonder. It's complicated, okay? We go back a long way and don't always see eye to eye. 
especially on matters of categorization, nomenclature, and subsequent archiving methodology. Not that he ever saw fit to delineate his preferred... Uh, don't mind me, Harold. I just mean Cyrus has his stubborn phases, and I just can't talk to him when he's in one. Okay, say no more. Your message is safe with me. Actually, Harold... No, it's okay. Nothing. Run along now. <laughs> Utterly unconcerned for your own safety, no respect for authority, wanton disregard for the future of humanity. Harold! Good timing, you can explain things to the Major, can't you? Harold? Come here and explain things! And yourself! Major? I'm just passing through. I really don't know what this is about. Hi, Felix. So you're not here to make excuses for this diminutive delinquent? Hey, I'm not diminutive, I've just got longer to live than you. And Harold, tell him about our plan. Harold! I thought I told you to stay out of trouble! I should have known you'd be wrapped up in this. I'm not in trouble. There is no plan. Are you questioning my authority and or organizational merit? What? No, Major. I... If I find out you're a bad influence on young Felix here... Not me, Major. Whatever Felix did, I'm sure it was meant innocently. And how would you know about that? Unless you're in league with him. I just meant, I mean, if you just relax. Relax? Harold, you're really starting to tweak my beak. Uh, but, but, what did Felix do anyway? Utterly unconcerned for his own safety, no respect for authority, wanton disregard. Anyway, Major, under whose jurisdiction is Harold in trouble? Mine! I'm the law here. Felix, will you be a witness to this? Absolutely. And can you testify to Harold's involvement? Only if he's willing to testify to mine. Harold, tell the truth now. It'll be easier in the long run. I haven't witnessed anything to testify. Damn it. Then the case is in danger of falling apart. I'm sure Felix's parents will deal with this. Good point. They should really be present while you question me, Major. I'm only a minor. Don't you throw the book at me, son. Where are they anyway? I don't know. And good luck finding them. Oh no, Felix, have you lost them? Harold, leave this to the professionals. Felix, do you mean to tell me you've neglected to file a missing person or persons report? Shouldn't we look for them? Don't change the subject. But Major, what is the subject? That's right, Harold. Know your rights. If, and I mean if, you're acting as some kind of heroic big brother figure to this young man, I expect you to be a positive influence. I, we, there's no... Come on, spit it out, man! Just leave me alone, Sandstrom. I've got fish to feed. Okay, Harold, but your fish won't save you if I catch you red-handed. Now, Felix! Where is Felix? Oh, no. Felix? Harold, you've lost him! Ah. about the announcement then? I think it sounds exciting, Alon. Do you think everything sounds exciting? Well, that new boy thing and all. Might give us something new to natter about. A new boy, Zim? What's it gonna pick up anyway? Alien radio drama? Not sure, Alon. Maybe we'll get some fancy pictures. Seems to me be more interesting to go sideways than back up top. You're going sideways, Alon. Right you are, Zim. It's all this sitting around nattering with you. Hey, Tommy. I don't suppose you'll be back in the shop soon? 
<sighs> or, I mean, I can come back later? Oh, uh, no. What do you need? It's just that the professor and I need some sea rocks. I mean, filter rocks from older times that have come from the filters. And I feel like you might have one. Shh, quiet. Don't be mentioning filter Frankie. You know that every piece of my inventory is legally obtained or, or legally found, right? Right, sure. That's why I'm here, to legally acquire an item of yours that you may have. Okay, look and listen here, Longy Long Pants. I shut the store for a reason, you know? Oh man, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to call you Longy Long Pants just then. You sure you don't want me to come back another time? It's fine. I'm just feeling sorry for myself. I've got this gut feeling that my beautiful angel wife don't care about me no more. Oh. No, I know I'm oversharing again. Tommy, you gotta stop oversharing. Look, kid, either way, I'm not gonna be of any help to you today. Uh, if you're sure. Yeah, you just caught me on a blue note, that's all. She's been spending so much time with that beautiful chunk of marble. You know, the guy in the silk robe and the flowing locks? Bridget and Chris, what are they doing in there? I can't hear them, but maybe I can lip read. Hmm, seems like Bridget is pretty excited about something. It looks like she's saying it's unacceptable. Tommy would realize it's just not worth the risk. Ooh, Chris is replying. Let's see. Maybe you're right. It could go so wrong. Anyway, we should get back before people notice. Hmm, <clears throat> pretty mysterious. Now I wish I'd never skipped those lip reading classes. Hello, Sai. How's it going? Oh, it's been tough, Harold. Every detail has a detail. It's like this filigreed... Oh, uh, it's good you're here, actually. Yeah? What do you need? Well, I'm having a bit of difficulty with a 3D printer. It's leaving gaps everywhere. Oh, okay. Shall I take a look? Yes, please. But I hope you're better with technology than you are with the ladies. Um, I hope so, too. Anyway, see if you and your screwdriver can get this printer its third dimension back. You have to undo the screws first to remove the front panel.
Ooh, something happened then. Uh, keep going. Now, you see that hole? <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, Harold. I couldn't resist. <laughs> Ow! Ow! Sigh, was the printer even broken? Mm, maybe, maybe. If it's any consolation, I discovered this little trick the hard way. Ow! Why didn't you just fix it then? Well, where would the fun have been in that? I'm not sure I'd like your idea of fun. Hmm, funny. Sunny says the same thing to me. But I guess she didn't like your idea of fun either, eh? Ow. Think of it as a wake-up call, Harold. Yeah, a little extra juice. Oh, that reminds me. Moreau asked me to ask you, how are the details coming along? Oh, thanks, Harold. Just like her to ask that. <clears throat> Is it? Um, anyway, see you next time, Sai. Harold, uh, one more thing. What is it, Sai? Could you take Maro a message? I suppose. Is it just going to be like hers? No, 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 nothing like that. It's something definitely unrelated. So, what's the message? Oh, okay, fine. You got me. Happy? Just tell her procedure smeager and that she puts the why are you in Cyrus. I don't know that's such a good idea. I mean, what is this whole thing about exactly, anyway? She started it! Back in the days, we were both part of the Archive Club. She was always so darn keen to throw away all the rules and invent new archiving procedures. She called it a healthy distress for calcified mental models. But all it did was stop us ever getting anything done. So, you disagreed about archiving? Precisely. But it was fundamental. I mean, we respected each other's work, but there was this deep difference. And I guess neither of us was willing to budge. So, what did you decide about the archives? That's not important anymore. Come on, man. Sometimes you don't need to reinvent the wheel. Okay. So, no message for her? <sighs> Just tell her I say hi. She'll know what I mean. Okay. Catch you later, Sai. Please halt for your contaminants. Inspecting. Location nominated. Journey commencing. Water thanking you. Thank you for traveling with all water. Hey Zoom, what do you know about Filter Frankie? Filter Frankie? Yeah, Frankie. Who likes I'm, I'm sorry to bother you again, but I went looking for Mrs. Vandervart, and she was at the harvest office. Non news. It's her office. Where else would she be? I know, but it's more who was there with her that I thought, you know, I should mention. What? Who was she with? It looked totally professional. I didn't see anything bad. Just Senor Tinnerbaum. Ah, what? What's he doing in her office? There's no way he knows enough about energy. If I still had my own hair, it would never have come to this. Tommy, I'm sure it's not like that. I just... You don't understand, Harold, what it's like to get old. But I'll be damned if I'm going to take this lying down. Tommy, I don't think you should uh, get angry. And you're in on this with me now, Harold. You did the right thing bringing this to me. I'm really sure it's nothing, just a lunch chat. I've just been so busy working on this damn store sign, thinking Bridget would love the ambition, you know? See me as a real go-getter again. 
But maybe this whole time I should have been showing her signs of my love. I'll bet she knows you. You're absolutely right. We'll modify the sign. Tonight, make it into a great big sparkly neon proclamation of my, nay, our love. A sign she won't be able to miss. A sign to blind that glossy maned Casanova. I mean, I'm not sure that's the sign. Don't doubt it, Harold. This is gonna work. I just feel it. You're in, right? Will you help me save our love? Uh, yeah, uh, I'll try. Knew I could count on you. Let's get to work. I'm gonna go freshen up a little. Might even put on a different outfit, now that I think of it. Will you go and look for Bridget for me? My dear Bridget, I'm sorry we haven't been able to spend much time together recently. So I get how you might be attracted to the man-machine with the flowing looks of an angel that you call your friend. But I do beg you to give me another chance. Please, Bridget. Will you let me back into your heart and take this monument to our love as a sign of my great affection? Tommy, of course I love you, and I would never betray you. I just wanted to give you some space. I saw you working so hard on your new sign, and I just wasn't allowed to tell you. Couldn't tell me what? Oh, what the heck. The ship's facing some issues with the energy budget. I knew you would need a lot of light for your sign, and I just wasn't allowed to tell you. No way we've got an energy problem here. That was it? No helping Tinner Bomb with his spray tan? That was it. No spray tan. I'm so sorry, Buttercupsy. I love you. I love you. Thank you for your help, Harold. I was hoping you'd accept this stone as a thank you. Ah! Oh, no. Moreau won't be happy to hear about this. you a message. Oh, thank you, Miss... Zudo, pleased to make your acquaintance. So, it's from Felix. He says there's something he wants to show you and to expect a secret message soon. Oh, what? Why? I mean, and why couldn't he just have said that to me himself? I don't know. Go ask him. My work here is done. Later's, mister. Thanks. Asking where is home anyway? Where else are we gonna go? Could they just leave some notes around? I wonder if this is the light keepers again, or just someone copying their style. Will they ever reveal themselves?
will shortly be closing for the night. Please attend to the necessary travel arrangements. Get home safe. Professor, you're not going to believe this. Why does that not surprise me? The Blue Rock, it's gone. You found it? You lost it? It was stolen from Tommy's store. This is utterly vexatious, Harold. I know. Oh, and I also got a message from Cyrus for you. Out with it, then. He says... Hi. Hi? Just hi? Yeah, just that. He said you'd know what it means. He's a sly one sometimes. I'll give him that. Stubborn as a mule. What's a mule? Oh, don't start, Harold. I've got to think of a comeback. I mean, get some important work done. What should we do? We? I need time to think. Madam CEO, you're going to want to hear this. I'm listening. It's the new boy, ma'am. It's picked up a signal that we have reason to believe originates from Earth. Earth? Have you reverse dated the transmission? We have. It was sent in 2102. So 126 years after we left. Things would have been pretty rock bottom back there by then. Let's hear what was important enough for them to call after us. Maybe it was their final farewell, huh? I hope it's nothing too awkward. Okay, I'll send a copy via... Well, just play it to me. I've got a 1205. But, Mom, it's only 10... And one of those. Okay, playing back now. This is Earth. Earth to the Fedora. Boy, you were sure we were all okay. Whoever is still out there. We're not quite sure how to tell you this. Johnston! Cut the damn line! You're live! What? Oh, fudge! Professor, did you hear that strange message? It was hard to miss. It's the first message from Earth. Ever? Certainly in my lifetime, at least. I wonder, what kind of message would a dying civilization speculatively send to a ship that can never return? What do you think it means? It means that the fact Allwater haven't shared it publicly yet means they're thinking about how to turn it to their advantage. What if it's not the first message? Don't be paranoid, Harold. What reason or authority would they have for keeping messages from us? Still, even if they had planned to share it immediately, they look suspicious now. Gosh, that message could be anything. Maybe they've got information for us about our mission. Hmm. Well, what could that information be? If we presuppose... Yes? Oh, it's you. Yes? No. Indubitably. Fine. What? 15% out of the question. Okay, sure. See you shortly. Harold, I want you to come with me. Huh? To where? What? Who was that? Why? It was the CEO of Allwater Corp, of course, asking me to jump. What for? How high? Indeed, Harold. Indeed. Well, unfortunately for my bath, she was adamant we went there immediately. She even unlocked our tube tickets for emergency night travel. But why? What does she want with us? Well, we'll soon find out, won't we? Come on, let's not keep Her Highness waiting. Crisis control. We need to get out there ahead of the turn in public sentiment. First move advantage and get this working for us, not against us. Yes, come in, come in, come in. Now, as you both know, time is of the essence. Sorry. Where are my manners? Would either of you like something to drink? Ah, I suppose I might like a coffee. There's really no time for coffee. Time is of the essence. Professor, would you like to sit? No, thank you. I prefer to stand. Oh, a woman of action. I love that. Anyway, we must act. Due to the unfortunate comic incident, we've been forced to move up the schedule. It's imperative we deliver some good news about the start procedure. Hmm. I suppose that wouldn't hurt. To that effect, Professor. And, um, you there. I'll need you to supervise Cyrus directly. 
We can't afford for any unforeseen delays. Cyrus, he works best undisturbed. The man is a stubborn buffoon, but there's no doubting his thoroughness. Professor, please, it would do this old heart good to know that you were keeping a watchful eye on him. Or maybe your, um, protege here could do it. I'll hang out with, I mean, watch Cy, sure. If it makes you happy, Madame CEO, we'll make sure Cyrus delivers. Great. Music to my ears. Thank you both. You've done all water and the ship a great service. We're ready. Go live and stay on schedule. It's my privilege to announce to you all today that our new boy program has already proven an unmitigated success. We present to you now the full and unedited audio that represents the first incoming message we've received in our lifetimes. Now, before the message plays, I'd like to take a moment to reiterate just how proud we should all be of progress on the new start procedures. It won't be long before we're ready for the first attempt, the latest in a long line of steps on the road to a greater, brighter future for us all. Please enjoy this message, brought to you by the All Water Corporation. This is Earth, Earth to the Fedora. Well, you sure hope you're all okay, whomever is still out there. We're not quite sure how to tell you this. Things were pretty rocky, you know, when you left, of course, and, you know... That was a brave move. Probably the right decision at the time. We didn't know whether to even tell you this, but we figured maybe it would give you some comfort way out there in the freezing clutches of deep space. To what? Oh, right. Yeah, I guess. Or, I mean, even better, the comforting, warm embrace of a lovely, habitable new planet. Well, we just wanted to let you know that we pulled together down here. The sparrows calmed down and things pretty much work themselves out. Life still isn't perfect. Bananas died out. And you've got to be pretty careful around water. But by and large, we're back on track. But survived. Wish we could send you a postcard. Anyway, be safe, and maybe one day we'll get a hello from you. We'll be listening. What are you all still doing here? Don't you have work or something to do? Scram! Unsatisfactory journey for some reason? Just contact your nearest uh, and all water will make it up to you. Hey, Professor. Oh, are those the new teacups? Come and see for yourself. Oh, I promise I ordered them. Harold, just look. Keepers could get the rock, and they knew we wanted it. That means that, uh, they must be someone who... Harold, it's late, and we've had enough excitement for one day. 
Let's leave the theories until tomorrow. Sure. I'm just happy that whoever they are, they're on our side. So it seems for now. Good night, Harold. See you in the morning. Okay. Night, Professor. Whoever made that leak must be feeling pretty terrible right now. I'm glad it wasn't me messing up for once. Let's see what tomorrow brings. Do you call this? Uh, good morning, Professor. The time is... I know what the time is. There's lots to be done. How are we going to find out who the light keepers are? I'm just as curious as you, Harold, but we have better things to do. I suppose you're right. How can I help? You can start by taking the rock to Bridget. She'll make the necessary preparations for analysis, which you should be able to handle. Okay, great. I'll get right on it. And Harold? Try to remember that whoever the Light Keepers are, our jobs here are to make life more stable for the people here, not less. I know. I know. I'll get going. Harold? I have it here. Ready. With rock. Oh, Harold, you can be such a killjoy sometimes. Anyway, it's going to take a while to analyze this little guy, so I'll send for you when it's ready. Oh, okay. Great. Thanks, Bridget. Oh, Harold? While you're here, maybe you could help me with a little something? Uh, maybe, but don't you think... Now, now, you'll do quite well. There's a little experiment I've been wanting to run. The remote control of the conveyors isn't working right now. My theory is Cyrus and his mugs of tea that he always forgets about before knocking over. So I need your help to manually control them. Can do. I'll be in here recording and analyzing the data. Right, see that button over there? The big one next to the conveyor starts and stops them. I think I can handle that. Yes, well, don't get cocky. I'll give you more detailed instructions over the loudspeakers as we go along. Three different types of organisms on the conveyor. Each is a different color. Are they pretty? See, don't I make life easy for you? But I want you to focus on the red ones for now, since we're comparing their data to past readings. Red ones. I got it. I'd be worried if you didn't. Anyway, pop them under the green machine next to you and stop the conveyor, please. Okay, great. On to the next step. Now, you see the analysis machine? Go start it up. The machine's UI is pretty easy. There are just two buttons. One to chop the sample, and one to coat it in our lovely space bacteria mix. Chop and coat. I see. Right. I'll be prepping the actual data recording in the meantime. I'll let you know exactly when to start the process. 
Wait for my command. Just like comedy, timing is everything here. Now! Great! Time to coat the sample! Okay, great! Now show me what you got! Hmm, intriguing. Okay, we need two more readings to have a representative data set. Nice one! Now, on to the next step. Now! Great! Time to coat the sample! Okay, great! Now show me what you got. Hmm, intriguing. Just the one left now. Okay, great! On to the next step. Now! Great! Time to coat the sample! Okay, great! Now show me what you got. Hmm, intriguing. Nice one, Harold. That's everything we need. Meet me back at the control room and we can look over the results together. These results... It looks like our catalytic bacteria is starting to have diminishing returns on the energy output. That's not good, right? No, but it also doesn't make much sense. Why would the bacteria have been fine until now? I'm not the best person to ask. What could have changed? I'm not sure. I've run the tests. The key variables, pH level, density, etc., are all stable on the bacteria. We're using the same organic matter for it to convert. And I've been double-checking the filters. They're filtering at the same levels as always. I mean, could something outside the ship be to blame? It is possible that somehow the organic matter is being affected before it hits the filters. But none of the tests we've run on the matter itself shows any key variants. Hmm, strange. Are the energy returns diminishing very badly? I'm not panicking yet, Harold. It's just a trend we can't let continue indefinitely. Unless we can miraculously find a whole new system for producing energy. Not panicking at all. Oh. Oh dear. I should get back to Moreau, but just let me know if there's anything else I could do to help. I'll keep you posted, Harold. And thanks. For your exit disconnection. Do not try to taste the disconnection. Destination decided. Enjoy the view. You have arrived. Please exit the ship in an orderly manner. We hope you'll travel with us again soon. Running all around. Wait. 
What's that sound? Isn't there more to life? I clean and I fix Till my legs feel like bricks My best friend is a mop I work till I drop And for what? No medals or treats I don't get silk sheets But oh! I'm the first guy they call for a leak. There must be more to life. I could be an artiste, my name would be fetid, or a chef whose every dish was celebrated. But maybe this is my destiny, trouble and strife. And perhaps that's okay at the end of the day. What more could there be to life? Oh, sorry, Harold. Ah, hey, yeah, hey, Tommy. Sorry, you startled me. I'm a bit startled myself. What brings you to the filter station? Just, you know, I should probably be going. But you just got here. Anything I can help you with? I I was just looking for Filter Frankie, but I guess he's not around. That guy can be slipperier than a jelly deal. Yeah, I've never even met him. right oh, I'll be going now. See you, Harold. Oh, okay. Bye, Tommy. <laughs> huge for origin of it, possible comet fragment, judging by the composition, could have been from far away. Mm hmm. That is. Ah! Professor, you scared me. This is. We've been thinking all along about. This data suggests. Hmm. But huh, that would contradict. Hmm. The potential implications. What is it, Professor? It's these readouts. I think I know what they mean. Oh, what have they told you? The rock strata looks like carbonaceous chondrite. Rare, but the aminos, backdating. It's a countdown. Great, for what? Our relaunch window. The sample finally reveals a pattern, and it means there's a two year gap between the otherwise constant solar wind storms. We're approaching that window fast. And if we miss it? We wait for 80 years. Most of us won't get to see the next one. Wow. So can you work out how long we have? If my calculations are correct, we're fast approaching the end of the current two-year calm period. In fact, I make it exactly 89 days we have left. Do you think we'll make it? Hmm. Not unless we find a miraculous source of energy to properly power the ship. I doubt it. I need to double check some of this data urgently. Oh, oh dear. Okay, Professor, I'll leave you be. 
I'm here. What's with the secret? Shh. Wait. I can't tell you anything with all these people around. Uh, okay. We have to wait until everyone leaves? Yes, that's the deal. Okay. Well, I wish I'd known. I would have brought a book or something. What are you reading? Oh, just the latest in the Fedora 4 series. Is that the beast from below? Oh, no. It's Persephone's Lament. Oh, I thought the beast from below was the latest one. Maybe I'm wrong. Oh, look. Is that Cherry Bafflesop? Who's that? Come on, you don't know Cherry Bafflesop? The food critic from the Chronicle? I'm a kid. I don't read newspapers. Well, the cartoons, obviously. And I quite like the Agony On column, actually. I think that might be Cherry, too. Oh. So, do you ever think it's strange? All these people, all their own homes, lives, thoughts... Maybe they don't even know we exist. Well, I mean, they can see us. Yes, but that's not always the same thing, is it? Oh, I suppose not. So, how's school? Why? Did Mr. Tenenbaum ask you to spy on me? Chris? No. I was only wondering. School's school. I try to concentrate, but it just seems... pointless. I mean, what do you need to learn to do what my dad does? And I'm sure they're not teaching us about what my mom does. But you need to just learn in general. You can't just know what you need to learn yet. Huh. I just feel like I learn more by exploring myself. Well, can't you do both? You can always explore, but you can't always get someone like Chris, I mean, Mr. Tenenbaum, spending all day helping you learn. Huh. I suppose it would be cool to know everything. Remember, the all water tube system will show okay, it's time. closing for the night. I hope it's worth the wait. Get snug. Oh, it is. Stranded. Coast is clear. Follow me. This, my friend, is the Tunnel of Secrets. It looks like a ventilation shaft? A small, dark one. Sure, that's what they want you to think. Come on! It's pretty cozy in here. Just follow. And trust me. So you promise you won't tell anyone about this? Promise? I mean, who would I tell? Moreau? She'd just say I'm making up tall tales again. Well, I think you'd better tell me a secret anyway, just so we're even. Um, okay. I guess that's only fair. Well, one time I dropped something into one of the filters, so I had to... Wow, ew. Uh, uh, okay, yeah, that'll do. Felix, come on. Can't you tell me where we're headed? Good things come to those who wait. So, how well do you know these tunnels, Felix? We're not lost, are we? Okay, trust me, I've been exploring these for ages now. Whenever my parents are away, or, yeah, I need quiet space, there's so much of the station people don't know about. I mean, could they even fit? <laughs> Probably not. And I'm glad they don't try. They can't be that bad. Oh, they're fine, just so busy, always. They let me get away with a lot. You could try not getting into trouble in the first place. Oh, come on. Don't tell me you're a goody two-shoes. <laughs> I'm 
tell the professor would think I am. She's not your mama, right? Nope. But she's been kind of like one. Hmm, so what about your... Are you sure we're not lost? Not long now, don't worry. Same stuff to look at, mostly. Gotta try find new angles. Huh. Did you read that somewhere? No, I don't think so anyway. Here. Uh, not for me, thanks. And not for you. Relax, it's just gum. Smoking is a dumb adult thing anyway. Ah. Uh, okay. I'll take one. Thanks. They call him the Scout. A man who dared to go where others wouldn't, or couldn't. He wasn't one for the limelight, but he was good at his job. He mapped out new lands. The light keepers made him an offer. Work for us, they said. A lesser man would have taken the money. But the scout works best alone. He can't be bought. Only the scout sees things for what they really are looks to the watery horizon while everyone else stares at their shoes. If only they understood. The scout is a legend. We've been trying to track him down for years. If anyone can find him, it's you, Agent Harrelson. So, what do you think is going to happen now that Earth is okay? Everyone wants to go back, but... Yeah, it'll take a while, right? Too long. Let's move on. So? But everything is going cold. Ah, you probably landed in a condensation puddle. Where am I? How do I get out of here, Felix? I I'm not sure, but good luck and we'll meet up later. I don't let anyone see you. We can't blow our cover. Okay, Felix. You take care now. Ha! Says the man who dived into a shallow puddle. See ya! <laughs> Yes, yes, 100%. And let me circle back to you on the... Oh, Slipmire, please do sit down and come in. Ah, uh, Madam CEO, have I got news for you? I should certainly hope so. Time is money, and I can't spend time on empty chatter. With so perilous a palpable public perception problem. Well, now you've had a chance to test my new super chill air con system. Have you given my start procedure idea any more thought? Surely you don't want to rely entirely on Cyrus. Yes, about that. I can still hear those blasted mice in the vents. So, it can't be that cold and therefore not that efficient. If the system can't scare some mice, how's it going to form the basis of a relaunch? Hmm, I don't want to presume, but did you turn it up to max? Yes, up to ten. 
Ah, I thought so. You see, this one goes to 11. Well, why wouldn't you just make 10? <sighs> Whatever. Will you do the honors? Of course. You just gotta click the dial past a little bit of resistance. Like so. Give it a few minutes to kick in, and those mice will be micicles! Good. Perhaps you should work on a prototype. We're going to treat people to a little public demonstration in ten days. Get the public buy-in, perhaps even a vote. Hmm, it seems like there's hope for your aircon yet. Those mice are feeling the chill. Yes! I think, I mean, I'd love another day or two to tweak the cooling coefficient. No extra days. This has already gone on long enough. We need to be seen to act. You know me, I'm all about moving fast. But not too fast. We can't cut corners on this. The stakes are too high. I'll keep it on the straight and narrow. But if you can, find a way to speed it up. Say no more, Madam CEO. Just wait until that demonstration. You'll see. Now about those all water co branded mittens we discussed. I can't stay here in here any longer. I'll, I'll become a herald sickle. Oh! Is this the bathroom? I guess the air comes in is sufficient around here. What a day. Time for me. Professor, that does sound nice. say you got stuck in the filter pipes again. Ah, uh, no. Well, there was a puddle, but... It's okay. You're here now. That's the important thing. <laughs> oh dear. Do have some tea. It makes everything better. Ah, uh, yes, I think I will. Ah, uh, warm. You need to remember to look after yourself. A stitch in time saves nine. I do. I just... this was, um, extraneous circumstances. Extenuating circumstances? What exactly have you been up to? Well, it's hard to explain, but I was with Felix. He showed me the vents. They were nice. But then I fell through a grate next to the CEO's office. From what I could overhear, I think something pretty serious is going on between Slippy and Mrs. Kesselchop. Slippy? I hardly think he's her type. No, 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 not, not romantically. It sounded like Slippy was working on his own relaunch procedure. What? That would be most vexing. Why would Castle Chop have told us about this? I don't know. Maybe Slippy himself wants to keep it secret for some reason. Well, I don't have much hope that Slippy would solve the problem. But it could be disastrous if he convinced the CEO that he could. I wonder whether those light keepers are aware of this. It seems probable. What I can't deduce yet is what their agenda is. Yeah. Things have been crazy, though, with them, all the all-water news, the rock, now this. Yes, very irregular. Not at all fitting with the usual models. Perhaps it's all connected somehow. Oh, could be. Did Slippy or the CEO say anything about what the procedure would be? Not really. All I could tell is that it somehow involved Slippy's patented air con system. Intriguing. 
Well, if this baffling pattern keeps up, I'm sure we'll find some new perplexing puzzle pieces soon. I'll keep my ears to the ground. Yes, you do that. Just watch out for puddles. Ha! Huh. I'll do my best. Well, let's sleep on it. You look like you could use some. Sounds good, Professor. Achoo! Good night. Night, Harold. And don't catch a cold, please. I'll try not to. Night. not how I imagined today to go. Hopefully tomorrow will be nice and normal again. No surprises, no excitement, just good old routine. Achoo! Ugh, that darn air con. Achoo! Ugh, I better not wake up with the cold. Dreamies. Maybe it's just a test. Uh, seems like something is up. Better go check the lab console and see nothing has exploded. Something wrong with the filter station again. This thing loves getting me out of bed.
Is he okay? It is breathing. We should be hesitant to ascribe deterministic gender terms to fishy here. Their race may not even have gender, biologically or culturally. Oh, sorry, yes. Sorry, Fishy. It just feels unfair saying it. Perhaps when Fishy wakes up, we'll be able to exchange theories about the formation of gender identity and its sociological impact. No doubt it'd give us some fascinating insights into the anthropological and biological imperatives of their society. But is... are they gonna be okay? Let me see. Essential life signs seem stable. Surface moisture looks acceptable. Keep an eye on them. If they look to be drying out, give them a spritz. And what do we do next? Just let me think for a minute. Should I go get more help? Let's not be hasty about telling anyone else yet. There are all kinds of ways someone, namely Allwater, could get this all so very wrong. Makes sense. There would be so many questions. You'd never be able to concentrate. Exactly. All those things will get in the way of us taking good care of this. Yes. Yes, and when they wake up, it's all going to feel pretty scary. We'll do what we can do. We just need to keep them safe until I can finish conducting the tests. I mean, you know, health tests. What about keeping them secret in the storage room? I could keep the boxes in my room. Hmm. Yes. Proximity to the lab. Humid environment. No other access. Yes, that should be suitable. Good idea. Let's move them in there. Gosh. I'm no expert, but they look really poorly. Don't worry, Harold. You did well to bring them to me promptly. They're in the right hands. Now, let me concentrate. Okay, I'll get to clearing up the storage room. <laughs> Okay, think I'm done with the box room. Wait, let's move them in there. Harold, can you get that? Hold it up and put it on speakerphone for me. Will do. Enjoy your new home, Fishy.
This is Maro? No, it's Cyrus. What? Cyrus? I'm Maro. Yes, I was trying to call you. You've succeeded, perhaps unfortunately. Yes, well, just for once, listen to what I have to say. I'm listening. Good. You sound faint, though. Am I on speakerphone? Yes, I don't have time to stand still every time you need me, Cyrus. What is it? So, Slippy is here. One moment I was all alone working on the hydrofusion coefficient machinations and thinking how interesting it was that... Sai, I really do hate to interrupt you, but not as much as I hate not interrupting you. You were saying about Slippy? Yes, well, the next moment he was here. He's rootling around, asking me all kinds of questions I don't want to answer. Can't you come and, I don't know, scare him off? I'll see what I can do. Give me five minutes. Okay. See you soon, I guess. Thanks. What was that? Nothing. Bye. Hmm. Harold, as you've heard, I've got to go and babysit. I've taken a blood sample from Fishy. Can you rush it to the pharmacy? Get it analyzed, then get some suitable transfusion based on the results. Can do. I'll go right away. Is it looking okay for now? Just fine. It's stable, and hopefully the results will help us with the missing pieces of this little fishy puzzle. I hope so. Thanks, Professor. Good luck. The all-water tube room to the utility district has now reopened. And perfectly on schedule, we might add. Traveling with all water. Oh no, Sonny's here. Hi, Sonny. Harold! Well, hello, it's been a while. So how's life after Sonny? What have you got for me? Oh, it's, uh, different. But okay. Uh, same old. It just as you... Uh, j <laughs> And just this, can you run an analysis? I mean, an, an, an analysis. <laughs> Same old Harold. Sure thing. Hand it over, and I'll take it for a ride in the QT. The, the what now? The QT, the quick test, silly. Uh, yeah. So, you still hanging out with my dad? Yeah, sometimes. Same old Cyrus, huh? Reckon the QT will be much longer? It only takes a minute. How long has it been? Like a few seconds at the most. Anyway, don't you have something you want to ask me? Um, okay. What have you been up to since then? Oh, I must stop you there, Harold. Looks like the cutie's all done. Let me just see... Oh, wow. Yeah, that's interesting. I'm sure it's nothing. Really, just... I'll be going. Hey, not so fast, Sonny Jim. This sample has definitely been taken from something odd, cool, or on a very radical cocktail of drugs. Spill the beans. I really can't. I have to get back. <laughs> to your new alien friend? <laughs> what? No. <laughs> Nothing like that. Just uh, an experimental fish. Cyrus. Cyrus made a new fish. But it lost some blood when uh, it accidentally got its fin trapped in a filter. Ah, Dad is always so boring about hybridization theory. I don't even want to know. So, you need an aquatic craniate blood replacement, huh? Yes, exactly. It's a valuable specimen. And it was kind of my fault. I'm thinking a solution of granulocytes and sodium chloride-rich plasma should do the trick. 
I think we've got some left in the cooler. Yep, here we go. Thank you, Sonny. No worries. Peace. get you rehydrated. Ah, oh, fishy. Sunny is so tiring. Why does she need to know everything? And why does she make it so hard to answer? I should just ignore her or make stuff up. She's so clever, but she doesn't really listen anyway. Does she even care what I've been doing? I know. I'll bombard her with questions. She won't expect that. I'll ask her what she really found out after years of traveling. Or I'll ask her what she ever saw in me. Or I'll ask her whether she's finally impressed now that I've discovered a new species. Well, maybe not that. Anyway, enough about me. How are you doing? How are you finding that new blood? Too bad you can't tell me. But by tomorrow morning we should know. Right. Time to get some sleep. Night fishy. What a day. I can't believe this is happening. And to me. Tomorrow, I'll get those antibiotics and I won't let Sunny get to me. Right. Night, night, Harold. Night, Fishy. Again, my alien fish butt. Let's see how you're doing. Oh. Not so good, huh? You're starting to run a temperature. Maybe the solution was wrong. Or something is infected? Or maybe you need some special kind of fishy food. I'm guessing the stuff Cyrus makes isn't gonna work on you. If this temperature keeps up, I'm gonna need to... Drat! That means another trip to see Sunny and her questions. I promise you, I won't get so flustered by her this time, though. Stay calm, Harold. It's just Sunny. You don't have to worry about impressing her anymore. You see, Fishy? I'm okay, aren't I? You're a good listener. Maybe that's why. I wonder if you can hear me. Not that you'd understand me. Maybe the sound of my voice is calming. Or terrifying. 
Oh god, I hope I'm not freaking you out and you can't tell me to stop. Twitch if I'm freaking you out! Okay, good. Uh, off I go. Unsatisfactory journey for some reason. Just contact your nearest uh, and all water will make it up to you. Destination chosen. We hope you enjoy your warm water tube system journey. You've arrived. Have you checked your pockets before moving? Um, Sonny? I need some antibiotics. Uh, what for? Me? Oh, yes, your strange life form. How's the condition of it? Has it undergone any unexpected metamorphosis? Uh, um, not that I've noticed. It really is just a fish, and... Displays of aposmatism? Not lately. Sonny, I don't have long... C can you please just... I'm not just supposed to hand these out, you know. I know, but the professor, and it has a fever. Hmm, well, take these. They should reduce temperatures and fever symptoms. And I hope you get better soon. Not that you should be taking fish medication. I appreciate it. So, what are you reading? Oh, this? It's the new novel from Montmorency Spangler from the Physical Expression District. It's an allegorical treatise on the Fedoran post-scarcity politics. Is it good? You know, it's better than his last one. Oh, Harold, we should start a book club. Um, maybe? Anyway, I'd better get back. Yes, yes, do keep me posted, Harold. For all time's sake. Thanks, Sonny. I will. Fishy. I've got something for that temperature of yours. Sticky situation you're in, huh? Let's hope these do the trick. You might be an alien, but how different can you be? Can't be as different as me and Sonny. <laughs> At least I managed to ask her a question or two this time. And I don't think she suspects that you're in anything more than a strange experiment of Cyrus's that I've somehow got involved with. I guess the fact that she doesn't trust me to do anything too exciting has come in handy for once. I'll check on you soon, pal.
destination determined. Now, relax with all water. You're here. Thank you for choosing all water tubes. your eyes. Inspecting. I'm sure you two will figure it out together. Play nice. Ah, oh, Harold, what are you doing here? Just walking by. What's up? I was just leaving Slippy and Cyrus to get on with things. Shouldn't you be looking after Fishy? Am doing. Ah, Harold. Just the man I wanted to see. Oh, thanks. Always nice to see you too, Cy. So nice, because you've got a solution to fix the 3D printer at last. Oh, but I thought... 3D printer problems, eh? Let's let Meyer take a look. Oh, if you're sure, Slippy, I'd be shocked if a man like you can't figure out what's wrong. Quite so. I'm away with machines. They're just like winter sports, you know? Uh, go on? Well, electricity is like a skier, and it's all about helping it find the right route with the right equipment. <laughs> Are you okay? I'm fine. Ha! I mean, yeah, sure. I guess I like machines, but they don't like me, eh? Ha ha! Well, looks like it's working again. Thanks, Slip. We know who to call for next time. Thanks for swinging by, Harold. You remember the drill? Yep. What's the test we're doing this time? It's basically the same procedure as last time, but we're adding two new variables that Cyrus suggested, in the hopes they'll have a positive influence on the bacteria's energy output. Great. What were Cyrus's variables? Playing music to them and giving them some sugar. Before you say anything, I know, I know, but Cyrus has measured both as having positive effects on his herbs, so why not, eh? <laughs> this bacteria is lucky to get so many treats. Yes, well, I'm not sure they have much awareness of enjoyment, but fingers crossed. Oh, before I forget, there are two new buttons on the console. Got it. Ready when you are. Okay, start preparing everything like last time. We'll start with the sugar test. Chop it, coat it, and then put some sugar on it. I'll let you know once I'm ready. Okay, great. On to the next step. Now. Great. Time to coat the sample. Now the sugar. Great, now for the next one, this time with music. to the next step. Now. Great. Time to coat the sample. Now turn the music on. I did the thing. Knew I could count on you, Harold. We're all done. For now. Join me back in the control room and let's have a look at the results. Okay, are we all done? 
Yes, thank you so much, Harold. I mean, neither classical music or sugar or talking softly to the bacteria per Cyrus's plant-based advice helped its mitosis ratio, but it still helped me narrow down a few variables and factors. Ah, good. Glad I could help. You know, Harry, you've helped me a lot recently. Let me treat you to dinner. Ah, oh, it's okay. I just try to be helpful. No, I insist. How about some nice fusion food at that new place? Well, it would be nice to eat somewhere other than the fish, fish, fish hut for once. Okay, it's settled. I'll meet you there tomorrow evening. I'll ping you in exact time later. Great. Thanks, Bridget. See you then. <laughs> Traveling with all water. Evening, everyone. Please remember the all water tube system will shortly be closing for the night. Get snug, not stranded. Day. Poor fishy. They'll pull through, though. I know it. But does Sunny suspect? Probably not. She's too wrapped up in her own world and whatever crazy new idea she's reading about next. I'm cruising very snoozing. so sick after secretly eating that filter fish. Ugh, those were bad times. Never been able to look at fish the same way again. Must be something else we can try. Should I ask Moreau? No, she's too busy. Sunny? Oh, fishy, can't you just get better right now so I don't have to go see her again? I mean, I will. For you. again. Hey, Sonny. Listen, those... Still struggling with your secret life form and or bizarre personal health issue? 
Yeah, a bit. I mean, the life form. You know, Harold, there's no shame in admitting you need help. I mean, sometimes it's a spiritual illness. Sonny, I'm sorry, I can't tell you. But it's urgent. Didn't the antibiotics work? They didn't seem to. Nothing works like it should with this. Hmm, well, I'm not a doctor or a vet, but there's one other thing we could try. Does your pet have antimicrobial proteins? Any autoimmune disorder? Or any kind of history of compromised transferring levels? Uh, it's hard to say. Harold, think. I can prescribe this floxifen, but it'll only work on a totally non-compromised immune system. I get it, but I want to try. It might help. Okay, are you sure you're sure? I mean, I also have isogerm, which is similar, but it's really dangerous to use on anything with high histamine levels. Ah, uh, um... Just take a minute to think carefully. I'd hate for anything to go wrong. Um, let's try the isogerm. That sounds safest. Okay, Harold. Here you go. Let me know how it all goes. Will do. Thanks again, Sonny. Travel in style with all water. Unsatisfactory journey for some reason? Just contact your nearest button and all water will make it up to you. Destination chosen. We hope you enjoy your all water tube system journey. You've arrived. Have you checked your pockets before leaving? Sir? Ah, Harold, just in time. Hold this, would you? Sure, but... Oh, what is that? It's just a swab. Samples are important. Important to us or them? One and the same. I know you're feeling protective of Fishy here, but the more we know, the better. Hmm. So what will that Fishy swab tell us? Understanding of their biology could shed light on our own human physiology. Advanced philosophy. Tell us how alien life came to be. Oh, okay. That does sound kind of cool. I just hope it tells us how they're feeling, too. Knowledge is power, Harold. Keep an eye on them. I'll be back soon. Roger. Hey, Fishy. Moreau is a bit obsessed, but I'm sure she won't forget about making you better. And I'll be helping. For all the good that will do you. Hang in there, buddy. Okay, let's see if these help. The things I do for you, Mr. Fishy. Well, Sunny was confusing as ever. Do I miss her? No, not really, but you know, we had some good times. She taught me a few things. Oh. About life and stuff, I guess. And what culture is. Do you have someone special? Do your kind even have special people? I wonder if you all look the same. Or feel emotions. I wonder what it'd be like to not feel emotions. Harold! Huh? Oh, Professor! Oh, beeping! Professor! What are their vitals? Uh, very squiggly. I... What's happened here? Speak clearly now. I just... I'm sorry. The antibiotics weren't working, so I went to see Sunny, and she asked me a bunch of weird questions, and then gave me something else to try on them, and... What did she give you? It was... I think she said it was called Fluxiderm? Did she mention antimicrobial proteins or histamine levels? Yes, those things. Okay. Well, there's no such thing as Fluxiderm, but I think I know what we're dealing with. 
It was Floxa or a germ, something. Oh, Harold, move. It's going to be okay. Just let me... Okay. They're going into anaphylactic shock. Harold, there should be some adrenaline on the shelf. Hand it to me quickly. Okay. This should stabilize them. Professor. Fishy. I'm so sorry. Harold, I know you were just trying to help, but Fishy isn't a duct or a filter you can just whack around until it works again. I know. I know. Look, you told me enough information for us to save them. No harm done, it seems. Fishy is stabilizing. Oh, thank goodness. Thank you, Professor. There's no point in beating yourself up, Harold. You live and learn. Go and settle your nerves. Yeah. Okay. I'll try. you are. Look, I got us the best table in the house. Oh, hey, Bridget. Thanks. It looks tasty here. Sit down. Sit down. Come on. What are you having? I hear the fish is very good. Which fish? Actually, I'm not sure I feel like fish anymore. Oh, you had a bad experience with it? Um, kind of. So, Harry, how's life been treating you? Uh, you know, keeping fishy. What? Uh, you know, keeping busy. Okay. That's good to know. Moreau treating you well? Sure. She's very Moreau. Yes. Thoreau should be her middle name. No, no. I said she's very Moreau. Like, she doesn't change much. But that's nice, too. Ah, yes. I've always admired that about her. Does she have a real middle name? I don't think so. But when I was younger, I thought it was Jeanne and that her first name was Professor. Ha! <laughs> Adorable. <laughs> Anyway, if you do ever want a change of pace, you can always come and work for me, you know? Like a little sabbatical. Oh, thank you. If I ever get the time, that'd be fun. You like algae, right? Is that on the menu here? No. At least, I hope not. You know, actually, I did kind of make a mistake. I'm sure it'll be delicious. I mean, that I did something dumb recently. Silly mistake, but it could have been really serious. We all make them, Harold. I mean, look at Felix. Um... Oh, God. No, I, I don't mean he was a mistake. He's just a bit... wayward. But that's probably my... I mean, our fault. I just sometimes wish I could know more about stuff. Ah, uh, knowing stuff is overrated. You think you know something, then it's wrong in another context. Or you realize you were looking at the wrong thing, and before you know it, you're an all-water energy consultant. But... How often do you do things that could be dangerous? I work with energy, so all the time. But there's a difference between knowing loads and being wise. So, being wise is... I think it's being kind and knowing what you don't know. And seeing deeper than just what something appears to be. Hmm. You know, everyone can make mistakes. But not everyone can learn from them. Thank you, Bridget.
gigantic energy implications if handled correctly. Exposed to the right level of radiation. Hmm. Or oh, heat activation potential. Hmm. Uh, Professor? Yes, Harold, yes? These glowing particles I swabbed from fish's skin might not be that spectacular on their own. But they do have their own kind of beauty. You see? Please slow down. I don't see it all. You will, when you inspect them under a microscope. They seem to give off an inner light, and since I've been looking, it's not dimmed at all. So, they're a light source? More than that. They might be our miracle. Our only hope of relaunching on time. Whoa. So they're a power source. Quite so. Light is an energy, so I thought about testing their effect on our bacteria cultures. Watch this. Look. When the particles interact, the cultures undergo massive mitosis and give off enough radiation. Ah, it's growing. It's going to outgrow the dish. What if it never stops growing? <laughs> Not to worry, it does. And you can, uh, discourage the growth, like so. Ah. Whew. Okay, that's very cool, but isn't it dangerous? Only if someone much less meticulous than I tried the same little experiment wrong. <laughs> yes, you'd be chasing down rogue bacteria for hours. So keep this to yourself for now. You don't have to ask me twice. So, the particles clearly have fantastic proportional kinetic potential at even a moderate temperature. And crucially, their rate of radiation is highly regulated. Now we need to know more. Okay, well, soon as Fishy is awake again, I'll ask. See that you do. Now, let's get over to the arcades. We don't want to miss the new start procedure presentation. Assembled Fedorans, it is my almost incalculable pleasure to introduce these two demonstrations today. Each will explore a different potential relaunch procedure in model form, giving you all a realistic look at the science behind it all. Not that it will affect our decision on which to prioritize in any way, but please do cheer for your favorite. Without further ado, please welcome Cyrus Soleil and his representative computer model simulation of the factors involved in a relaunch to the stage. Okay, hi everyone, thanks uh, for coming, I mean, to watch this presentation. Uh, there's a lot of science, so I thought I'd just show you the computer model. <clears throat> so, uh, here it goes. This is not supposed to. Uh, but you see, in a way, this proves the importance of considering every angle. And with just a few calibrations, I'm sure. That's quite enough, Cyrus. Thank you. Moving swiftly on. Slipmeyer, will you please present Flo and Go to the audience, please? Absolutely, Madam CEO. Please witness the future of Fedora. A launch plan not just to the stars, but for the superstars you all are. The following presentation is brought to you by the Schipmeyer Foundation. Putting trust in humanity's dreams for hope. In partnership with All Water Corp, making life flow. And sponsored by Slippy's Winter Sports Goods. Chill times all year round. The Fedora, our home, trapped together, all of us, underwater, but no more. It's time we grabbed Destiny with both hands and say, Destiny, meet Project Flow and Go. 
begin by rolling up our sleeves for some good old-fashioned hard work. Starting with making the fedora whole again. Once we're back in one piece, and good as new, apart from a few seaweed stains and a little rust, we'll utilize the awesome power of Slippy's patented aircon technology to freeze the ocean water around the base of the fedora. Why? Well, did you know ice is 9% denser than water? That's what makes those ice cubes float on the top of your soda. Are you catching on? Here comes the kicker. The giant ice flow attached to the fedora will rise up from the depths and help us go back into the atmosphere. Once we're airborne again, we'll have to say goodbye to our flow, but we'll never forget it and be in water. That's what makes those ice cubes float on the top of your soda. Are you catching on? Here comes the kicker. The giant ice flow attached to the fedora will rise up from the depths and help us go back into the atmosphere. Once we're airborne again, we'll have to say goodbye to our flow. It's not. I just happen to agree with them. I'm not convinced your uh, model is quite up to the rigorous standards we need. Slip Meyer's model shows a lot of vision and attention to detail. It didn't show any attention to detail that matters, just sparkles and... I think it's best we, um, put a freeze on your project, Cyrus. I'm sure you have much more important things to do for the station. No hard feelings, eh, Cryus? Mmm, no, it's... Wait, what did you call me? We all want what's best for the fedora, eh? Wish me luck! You may now exit Something the is afoot. Thank you on Too many things that don't add up. For choosing to you know how I today. hate bad arithmetic. Right. Like why my model failed. And why all water went with a patently observed option. And why the tube fares keep going up. Yes, and why... Wait, Harold, I really don't think that part is connected. And why did they want us to keep going without letting us know about Slippy? Now that I think about it, there was something weird about his presentation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He seemed even more infuriatingly self-important than ever. Okay, name-calling isn't going to get us anywhere. Let's look at the facts. There's the energy shortage that Bridget told me about. We know which star procedure is most popular, even though it'll never work. Oh, oh maybe they're planning on that. Hmm. Are you positing a secret all-water plan, shielded by a deliberately untenable public one? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, I mean, you mean Slippy's, right? Yes, I mean Slippy's, but yours is clearly missing something too. I, I know, but the foundations are sound. I just need to pinpoint what went wrong. Did you double-check the velocity correction? Well, of course, but the power differential. Yes, yes, I know, but that doesn't mean anything without a variable energy diffusal. So you keep saying, but unless we run the model enough times. If I could just... All models are false, so... All very good and well to say, but we have to base our tests on something. A waste of time without more information first. We'd be the blind leading the line. Ugh, more graffiti. With great power comes great responsibility. Huh? Makes sense, I suppose. But I wish they'd think of who has responsibility for cleaning. It's taking me great power to get it off. Friends shouldn't scare other friends. What's this all about? Can you go into the shower and close the door? 
This is a strictly off-the-record conversation. Okay, I'm in. What's happening here? Okay, okay, listen. We need a man we can trust. Who is we? Oh, right. Yeah, the Light Keepers. What? The Light Keepers? Uh, yeah, that's us. Whoa. So, how many of you are there? Well, it's just me in here. But, I mean, there are lots of Light Keepers. We are Legion. I'm one of them. An important one. Wow. So, how do you know you can trust me? I mean, you can, but how did you know that... I guess you have eyes and ears everywhere. Secret informants and... and... Yeah, all of that stuff. You can recommend it by a secret source. Right. Wow. Okay. So, what do you need? What we need is proof. All water are planning something. We know it. We just can't prove it yet. Yes. How can I get proof? I am not very actually a uh, detective. Actually? When? Oh, just listen. The shaft above here leads to the CEO's office. And we know there's going to be an important meeting happening there shortly. Ah, uh, yes, that shaft is freezing. Thanks to Slippy's new and improved AC. We know, but we planned around it. First, you'll need to procure a small camera. Our intel has narrowed the location of one down to Moreau's lab. You'll need to distract her, steal the camera, and make it back to us undetected. Oh, okay. I think I can do that. Good. Time is of the essence. Meet me back here as soon as you have the goods. Will do. How do you know about the meeting, by the way? A network of hidden informants? Ah, uh, no. We just snooped in the CEO's diary during one of our open-door policy days. Oh, okay. I suppose I'd better get to it. God's beats the prefish. Wow, I get a call name? Yes, and good luck. Looking for something, Harold? Ah, uh, um, uh... I am looking for the, you know, the little video camera. Ah, yes. The Pentasonic Mark II. If you say so. Have you seen it? Of course I have. What you mean is, do I know where it is now? Yes. Do you? No. Ah. I really need a professor. I'm too busy to help you rummage around. Anyway, didn't you have it last? Oh, did I? I'll check in my room. I'm sure it's not in there, though. All models are full, so all very good and well to say, but we have to base our tests on something. A waste of time without more information. Let's take a better look at this doodad. Oh, the camera. Excellent. Of yeah, the variable energy diffusal, yes, yes, I know. Well, if you know, then why can't we model it first? Okay, here you go. Let's see. Yes. Perfect. Let me just make a few quick modifications. Uh, what's all this? Model cam. Huh? What's it going to do? Mobile secret reconnaissance, of course. Come on, let's get going. We don't want to miss anything important. Okay, so what should I do with it? Start by placing it in the shaft. Then you'll need to use the remote controls to navigate it to the CEO's office. Then you'll need to find a good view to record it all from. Drive it back out of the shaft and into our welcoming arms, all in the name of truth. Right. Okay. I think I can do that. You don't want to drive? Uh, uh, I would, but uh, I'm not so good with remote spatial awareness, and, you know, someone like you has experience with control panels. Oh, well, if you're sure. Right, oh, Motocam. Let's take you for a drive.
Okay, Madam CEO, I'll be going now. Yes, I believe you shall. Godspeed, Slipmire. Godspeed. Yes. Is that Dr. Computer? What? It's me, Castle Chop. The password. Oh, for goodness sake, must I? Okay, fine. It's Kutsu Hung Shiny Prize. I'm just calling to say you may commence stage D as discussed. Do you have everything you need? Very well. Keep me in the loop. Time is of the essence. Yes, yes, okay, okay. Goodbye, Doctor, and don't let me or the fedora down. Righto. Eight, R, three, M, N, four. Open. Oh, hello, my lovelies. Listen to your beautiful purring. So nearly a perfect harmony, but just missing that one last voice. I'll find you one eventually, wherever you are. Gee. What can you see? Don't shut me out here. I'll tell you later. We gotta get to the lab. Slippery fish, wait, what about the mission? <laughs> wait, wait, what did you see? <laughs> Professor, sigh. Oh, hey, Harold. What's got you more jumpy than a caffeinated frog, hmm? Wait till you see this. I'll just get it hooked up. Okay, I'm waiting. Phase D? Dr. Computer? This opens a whole box of questions. Uh, if you ask me, it's more of a parcel of intrigue. I wasn't and won't be asking you. Anyway... Only one thing is for certain in all this mess. We must continue with the alternative start sequence post-haste. How on Fedora did you get this, Harold? It's a long story, but it all started when I... I'm sure you were very heroic, but it can wait. We've got to act fast. And we should be careful who we trust. Quite so. In fact, Cyrus, I think you should continue your work in the small room downstairs. It's out of sight and should have what you need. Okay. The really small one? Don't whine. Anyway, I have to see Bridget to tell her about all of this. Harold, can you take the box of computer stuff downstairs for Cyrus? We'll do. Great. Okay, everyone, let's get on with it. equals x minus one. What about... But that would change the square of... Um, Sai? Hmm? Oh. Oh, yeah. Hey. Hmm. I've got this box of computer stuff for you. Oh. Uh, thanks, Harold. Uh, just put it on the table. Sure you don't need me to stick my screwdriver in anything? Hmm? What? No, no, I think it's fine. I was just... Remember when... Anyway, what are you working on? this place isn't exactly my usual setup. I need to expand the filter station control system with these parts. Then I can run the tests I need and access the thrusters. Drat, this is going to be tricky. Different gens of Servotech. The old Fedora firewall is blocking me out so that the connections might not talk properly to each other. Oh no, that'd be lonely. Yeah. Reckon you could go ask Rafi if they can help open a few ports and maybe disable the firewall? I've not a moment to lose. Sure. What should I tell them? Uh, just that I need their system protocol expertise. Appeal to their vanity? Can do. Back soon. This 
destination selected. Have a pleasant journey and a fantastic day. You're here. Thank you for choosing all water tubes. Rafi? What is it now? Cyrus needs help with some pretty important research. So I came to ask, is there any chance you could help disable a firewall for him? It's stopping him from accessing the systems he needs. For the research. Could you be any less specific? Uh, no, but... Of course. I know what you mean anyway. Oh, how... I mean, great. So you'll help? Afraid not. Any system Cyrus is struggling to access is old. That stuff isn't my responsibility anymore. I know, but it'd be a huge favor. Plus, messing with that might have knock-on effects. Might even mess with my cabinets here. Oh, I see. Well, um, any tips for doing it ourselves? Have you tried turning it on and off again? Oh, I'll suggest it. Thanks anyway, Rafi. Destination determined. Now, relax with all water. Thank you for traveling with all water. Bird. Hang on. That's Zoya's bird. Good shot. I'm not just a pretty face, you know. Now, do you have any idea what this feathery menace is doing here? He could have damaged all sorts of sensitive equipment. <sighs> yeah, I think I might have an idea. I'll deliver her back to her rightful owner. Okay, if you say so. Just see that she doesn't get loose in here again. Captain at large, Zoya? Hello again. Uh, Coco! Yeah, I found her in the lab. She seemed very excited about something. Is she okay? Yep, I think so. Moreau had to help me catch her, hence the net. Oh, Coco, you mischievous little thing, you. Causing your captain to worry and making trouble for everyone. Don't ever change. Well, I'm glad you're back together. Thank you, Harold. If you ever want to come and visit, Please, feel free. You should see her peeling a nut. It's hilarious. And the way she dances when I put music on. Thanks, Hoya. I might pop by another time. See you, Coco. Journey commencing. All water 
thanking you. We know you enjoyed traveling with all water. You're welcome. Sai. Bad news. Rafi couldn't help. G good news. I got it working. How? Uh, yeah, typical right after you left. Uh, uh, sorry, I forgot to message you. I got distracted verifying part one of my double checklist uh, by testing the velocity of a plant stock in a variety of energetic states while varying the atmospheric pressure. Harold? Mm hmm. Yes? Well, thanks for asking him, though. But that's okay. Good luck with the rest of the checklist. Yes, I'll get back to it. Unsatisfactory journey for some reason? Just contact your nearest uh, and all water will make it up to you. Hey there, Tommy. Ah, oh, Harold, you came. Sit down, let me get you a drink. Thanks, Tommy. I'll have whatever you're having. A man of fine taste. So, how's life? Oh, you know, nothing out of the ordinary whatsoever. Definitely just the same as always. Okay, then. So, hey, I wanted to say about that blue rock. Ah, uh, it wasn't your fault, Tommy. I know, I know, but boy, did I feel like I had egg on my face. Those darn light keepers, eh? Always messing about in other people's business. Yeah. But I don't think they're so bad. I'm sorry they smashed your window, but they seem to have good stuff in mind. Well, you've got good stuff at heart, and you didn't need to break my window. But hey, what do I know? How is the shop going? Ah, uh, just fine. The sign has given things a bit of a boost, but new stock has been a bit slow. I'd love to scale back the time I spend there a bit, you know? Spend more time with Bridget, especially now she's working so much again. Yeah. It must be hard. Life has definitely become more busy recently. You got that right. It's good to have someone to talk to. Someone who doesn't mind my grouching. No way do I mind, Tommy. Grouch all you want. Thanks, Harold. I'll get back to grouching soon, but hey, how about you? Those filters keeping you on your toes? The filters? Why? Have you seen something? What? No, no reason at all. I got no special interest in the filters. Just making conversation. I haven't heard from Filter Frankie in a while. Guess he's taking it easy. Oh, sorry. Well, the filters are also totally normal, just like always. Okay, good. Well, here's to the filters, eh? Long may they remain at optimal capacity. Cheers. Cheers. So, come on. You must have something you want to grouch about. Well, sure, but I try not to, you know, focus on it. Come on, come on, it's your turn. Don't make me do all the grumbling. Okay, well, the tube tickets are pretty annoying. The rules change faster than I can keep up. I swear they do it just to confuse you into making mistakes so they can fine you. And it's not like they work all the time anyway. So what are you paying for? I just wish it was easier to get around, you know, without worrying all the time.
It's gotten late. I think I should. I think I should get back home. Okay, Harold. Sounds like a plan. Thanks for sharing a few drinks with this old grumbler. Get home safe. What's up, Fishy? Long time no see, huh? Hope you're having fun, Fishy dreams. <laughs> did I just... Did I hear you just wheel? <laughs> it's okay. It's okay. We're not gonna hurt you. God, of course they don't understand me. What can I use? A pineapple. A pineapple. Uh, no. What else? <laughs> Don't panic or die. Please. Just wait. Come on, Harold, think. What's on these papers? Ah, just Burroughs' notes. Nothing I could use. Harold, what are you dithering over? Awake. He said, we you. What? They're awake and attempt to communicate? Yes, I'm trying to tell them what's going on, but... They seem to have fainted again. Harold? You said they said Wii U. Anything else? And some skis. Skis. Pineapple. Notes. Professor, I've got it. Pineapple Helga the Mountaineer. Harold, are you feeling okay? Maybe it's something contagious after all. No, Moreau. I could use a picture book to talk to Wii U. I mean, communicate with Fishy. I'm sure Chris will have some at the school. Hmm. Not a bad idea at all, Harold. I'll fetch some recording equipment, too, in the meantime. We're going to need plenty of samples if we're to decipher an alien tongue. What? You can't take their tongue? You klutz. I mean their language. Okay, but what if they wake up again? Life signs are stable, and I don't think they're going anywhere quite yet. Go on, go! you here? Chris, I need some pictures. Uh, of anything in particular? And you do know I'm not an art teacher. I just need a book. Uh, a kid's book, like Pineapple Helga the Mountaineer. Well, I'm glad you asked, Harold, but maybe you should be challenging yourself a bit. Ah, uh, yes, I will, but I just need to relax. Please, Chris. Hmm. Okay, Harold. I'll bring you one later tonight when I'm done. Ah, no. I really need it now. Harold, uh, are you okay? You seem so stressed. Maybe you do really need a nice book. Okay, I'll get you one now. But you'll have to watch the Bambinos while I'm gone, okay? Yes, sure. Thank you, Chris. Thanks. Okay, okay. You sure you're okay, Harold? No, uh, whatever happens while I'm gone, just don't let them under your skin. Okay, Harold, mustache. Don't let them bully you. 
Uh, Chris, what? Uh, wait. Ciao, Harold. Ciao, bambinos. Don't cause them any trouble, okay? Okay. Okay. Now, kids. Are you a teacher? Where's Mr. Tinnebaum gone? No, I don't know. I'm just doing Chris, I mean, Mr. Tinnebaum, a favor. I have a question. I'm probably not qualified, but I'll do my best. Where did babies come from, Mr. Harold? Uh, just Harold is fine. And, um, they come from two people. Who are my parents? What? No, I don't mean the two people disappear. They become your parents. So, it could be any two people? I think it's like, uh, two people grow you and they give you to whoever's assigned to be parents? Yeah, that's it. Uh, I mean, the growing part, not, not the- When will I grow up, Mr. Harold? Felix, you'll grow up soon, but don't rush it. I, I mean, enjoy your youth while you- Why aren't you a teacher? Oh, for many reasons, but mainly because- Why does flammable and inflammable mean the same thing? If you're not a teacher, you're a stranger, and I've always been told not to talk to strangers. Is today's lesson going to pick up from Cartesian dualism or move straight into Neoplatonism? Everyone, please slow down. Okay, now, who wants to learn about filter maintenance? There you go, Harold. Thanks for holding down the fort. Thank you. This will do great. Hope they didn't give you too much trouble. No, no trouble at all. Great. Everyone say ciao to Mr. Halibut. Ciao, ciao Mr. Mr. Halibut! Destination chosen. We hope you enjoy your warm water tube system journey. Teaching an alien how to speak my language. Fishy? Wake up. I'm back. Wake up. Professor, I'm sure I'm starting to understand. No need. The translation device is ready. Oh. Oh. Okay, let's see. Does it work instantly? Will they understand exactly what I'm saying now? Oh, I can understand you. <gasps> I can understand you! Oh. So where am I? Good gosh, I'm glad you're okay. What are you? 
Oh, you're on board the Fedora? It's a ship. We're from Earth? Well, the ship is. Oh, sorry. Um, what's a ship? Oh, sorry. Uh, we're humans. Well, I see you're getting along just fine together. I've got some things I need to take care of urgently. I'll leave you two to it until I'm back. Play nice. I have so many questions. energy-giving properties of the particles. Ah, Harold, join us. Hello, you two. Hello. Will you go on? Ah, uh, yes. Uh, we get warmth in the air from them. And other things, like food, materials. And where do the particles come from? We aren't sure. There is a big glowing hole in the cave that feels very nice to be around, though. Harold, you didn't tell me this earlier. What? I... Oh, Moreau. I didn't really tell him. Not much changes back home. So I suppose no one thinks much about them. Oi, Faye. We need to see this hole. I'd love to see it too. But how do we get there? Hmm. By the way, Professor, did you tell Wii U what you told me about the particles? I did. I suppose I owe Wii U here a thank you. My pleasure. I accept. Uh, Wii U... It's more like she means... I mean, let's retire for tea. No great plan was ever made without it. Tea. Thank you. It smells great, like flowers. Yes, don't tell Cyrus. He's stressed enough as it is without worrying about me stealing from his herbarium. Yeah, there's definitely a lot to keep track of. Like, whatever is going on with all water. Well, we don't know for sure. Only that they're hedging their bets on the launch procedure, and the CEO is acting strangely indeed. Then there's the Light Keepers. What's their plan in all this? Who knows? I'm wary, but at least they seem invested in the truth. And that means for now, they're on our side, whoever they are. I guess so. Be nice if they stop with the graffiti, though. What's the latest with our start procedure, by the way? My, my. T does make you talkative. Cyrus is working hard. I'm sure he'll iron out the problems he's having. It's just whether he'll iron them out in time. How do you feel about all this, Wii U? Oh, great. So much is going on. It's very exciting. And how about you, Harold? I'm just relieved we could help Wii U. Yes, you two clearly have a special bond already. Uh, what is bond? It's something that keeps us close together. Oh, okay. Are you holding it? No, we you. It's an invisible, emotional thing. Great. Nice to carry. Will you? Do you miss where you came from at all? Not really. I'll go back eventually, and that's okay. Well, 
I quite wondered if maybe you'd take Harold with you. Me? To the cave? Yes, to investigate the source of the particles. Of course, I want to go, but I can't just drop everything and people would notice me gone. But... me? And me. Don't worry, my boy. I'll be in close contact. And after all, haven't you been craving some adventure? Oh, sure, but what if I get the adventure wrong? You'll just be observing, taking readings, letting Wii U show you how things work. You trust him, right, Wii U? Sure. There'll be lots of Flumilim to meet. Plenty of Margaraha to see. Oh, what are Flumilim? Oh, that's a hard one to translate. It means... things you can talk to. Like everyone back at the cave. But I suppose it also means people like you. Oh, so it's the name for your kind? Well, it's all kinds. We've not needed any more detail before. And no one will mind if you don't call them Flumilim. Cool. It's just a bit confusing otherwise, don't, don't you think? <laughs> not for us. We all have so many classifications for everything. Even a person can be male or female. Now that's confusing. Huh. I suppose that's true. So, do you not have, uh, two kinds of person? Not like how you're thinking. Don't worry about it. Just call us friends. Or our names. Okay, we will do. Great, then it's settled. Will you? You'll take Harold to explore the cave and meet the rest of the Flumilim. I can't believe it's gonna be me that sees it all for the first time. Yay. Oh, but I can swim. How will Howell come with me? Ah, just follow me. I have a little something to show you both. I'd like to introduce you both to Jetsam, a little hobby project of mine. Used to be a space buggy meant for short-range planetary surface analysis. And now, it will be your means of visiting a very different kind of world. It's amazing. I'll look after it, I promise. Now, before you go, I've uploaded new firmware to your PDA. Oh, what does it do? Well. I developed an update to the translation software based on your discussions with Wii U for use with the PDA, so you don't have to schlep that huge machine around. Oh, neat. I call it Omnicom. Also, you should both take one of these. Where does this go? In your ear. It's an earphone. It connects to the PDA, so you can have real-time translation. Plus, it allows me to stay in close contact with you. Very cool. And it'll work at long range? It should do. I developed a super efficient transmitter and new batteries for it all using some of Wii U particles. Glad to help. It'll mean that whatever happens, you can stay in contact with me in some shape or form. And Harold? Yes, Professor? Do not lose it. 
Unlike that toaster, these aren't easily replaced. I won't. I'll be careful. About everything. That should be everything you need. Hop in. I'll be on the radio, and I'm sure you two will look after each other. We oui, you. Let's go visit your home. Thanks, Professor. Good luck, you two, and have fun. For me. We will. Shows. What happens if I push this? Whoa, too fast! This is fun! Come on, come on, come on, come on, stop swerving. Moreau will kill me if I did her hobby project. Seems like you're making it swim calmly now. Yeah. Whew. Getting so less light. Less light means bad distance. It's called dark. And yeah, getting very hard to see. <laughs> I know. It's chilly. Say, how did you find your way to the fedora? wasn't easy. Dark and chilly don't like either. But once I had started, I just wanted to see what there was. I had to keep going. Next thing I knew, very light. Less chilly, lots of owl. Then you, shouting at me. When you tell it like that, it doesn't sound like a great experience. Worth it. Well, I'm glad it was worth it, and that you kept going. On that note, how are we going to get to your place? No worry, I can see. What, in the dark? No, it's more like the right direction glows for me. Oh, everything on the fedora is signposted, so we don't even have to think about how to get somewhere. Glowing directions sound much more fun. So, you can direct me there? Yep, I can see the way clearly. And I'd better turn on the proximity sensors in the dark. I really don't want a lecture from Moreau. Okay, Wii U, you're the boss. Take us away. We're almost there now. Be careful. The entrance tunnel is very narrow. Okay, I think I see it. It's going to be a tight squeeze. Here? Yep. This is the place. Good job, Howell. Now we just have a short swim. Oh, I hadn't thought about that. Very short. It'll be fine. Let's go. On land. Real alien land. What do you mean? It's just a bit of rock. Come on up. So much rock. Real rock. Bumpy and slightly warm. And... Yes. Rock is okay. It's rock. Ah, oh, we it's just that the fedora. It's all metal. It's not real ground. 
I've never walked on anything made of real rock before. Okay. Would you like some? What? I mean, sure, but thanks. Walking on it is kind of... Then you could always have your foot on a rock. Thanks, Wii U. Soon. We'll get there. Wow. We're nearly there. I can't quite believe it. There. Where? Wherever there is. Wow, what's going to be there? It's so cool to finally be here. I still can't quite believe it. It's exciting not knowing what I'm going to see next. It could be anything. And I'll be the first human to see whatever it is and what... Are you okay, Howell? This is your home? Well, not my. Our. Our place. <sighs> Come on, we're not there yet. More to see. So, this is the cave. It's... Whoa. Magical. So much space. Wheel. What is everything? Where do you get food? What are your jobs? How does everything work? You'll see. One thing at a time. something but i'll be back soon oh sure should i wait somewhere yes at the waiting bench sounds cozy hello that means hi there i thought it might tell them i say hi back will do okay let's go sit cozy howell back soon it's polite to ignore people here. Maybe I should introduce myself. I don't want to get off on the wrong foot. So, uh, greetings. I offer you human greetings. Mm hmm. Is the translator not working? Let's see. Hello? Maybe it needs more calibrating. So, you come here often? Gosh, this reminds me of one time I was waiting in the all-water reception office. I was stuck in there with Nellie Hootsalot for an hour, and let me tell you, she was not a lot of hoots. Do you know Wii U? Gurp, or Nurp. I mean, I haven't known Wii U for that long, but I do feel like we get each other. Same wavelength, you know? How are you finding the weather in here? I think it's nice in here. Warm, but not clammy. And no sudden trots when you change rooms. Nurp, nurp. What's the latest news in the cave, then? Not too talkative, huh? <laughs> so, what are you waiting for? Burp. Ah, that. Well, it was nice meeting you. And like Moreau always said, never say more than you need to. Air and time are more precious than extra words. Oh, 
I'm Harold. Nice to meet you. Hi, Oopa. Ah, I'm sorry. It was an accident. I'm just clumsy sometimes. No, no. Ruha. Ah, uh, translator needs some more calibration, I think. Dadachum. Hello. Oh, hello. What's this place? Hmm, can't understand you. Oh, um, am I talking too fast? What, in the cave? Loud and slow as you want. Still talking nonsense to me. Oh, right. Without an earpiece translator, it only works one way. I'll just be quiet, and maybe you'll happen to explain. I wonder if you understand me. It's unusual. Lumbly gloop? Or anything else? Oh, so I can lumbly gloop here. Or... Uh, oh, you uh, do know lumbly. Is he asking me for it? Or offering? Sorry, don't know what else to say. This booth is fascinating. But I think I better try it again with Wii U. Thank you so much. Fish in a bubble. What are these things? Lupo. What do you say? Ah, uh, yeah, they're not going to be able to understand me. It's supposed to be quiet here anyway. Just sit and Glupo. I wonder what Glupo is. Or are... Maybe the things in the nooks? I don't know why you're talking in gibberish. But please, shh. Oh, I guess it's important to be quiet here. Out of respect, maybe? sensitive still at the moment. Oh, hello there, little ones. Yes, come on, this way. Follow us for tickety.
like this? Getting a greeting ritual badly wrong? <laughs> no. You're just playing around with those cheeky kids. I think they love you now. What? So I'm not offending everyone? Well, you're not exactly being polite. But I think everyone is pleased to laugh at the funny alien. Hang on. Do you remember Pineapple Helga? Of course. Such pointy hair. And lovely long shoes. Is it like when the mini yetis did the snowball dance? Yes. They would have kept on doing the tick 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 anyway, but they were glad to have someone new to show it to. Okay, I think I get it. I think I'm beginning to understand a bit about how you all think. Yes, you'll get there. Just like when Helga has to imitate a seal to get to the ice cave. Will you? Can I ask you something? Of course. Did you tell them I was coming? <laughs> it's going to be a lot easier if I just show you around before trying to answer. Come on. Oh there. Did a chick. Hi. Could you give my friend here a little something? Sure. The blue pole be okay. Here you go. Oh, uh, will you? Mm, no. Give him the blooper doop. Thanks, will you? This one looks much better. Go on. Um, go on to do. Feed the crow up. Oh, man. Right there. Come with. Come with. Now watch. Oh, trust me. I will. So we tie the uh, coisy like so. And then bubble fish. Wow, that's how you fish? Yep, bubble fish. Oh, but I mean, isn't it a bit weird that you. What is weird? Oh, uh, never mind. So, 
Will you? I have a question. And I have an answer. But you don't know what the... It's Didemol. Not this time it's not. I don't get the purpose of using a fish to make a rope to then catch another fish with? Aha. Uh -huh. You can see why, right? Yes, but things just work like that here. It's not always how it looks. So what is going on? Hmm, how to explain? Things work in cycles. Maybe having a fish isn't the same as getting a fish. When we turn something into something else, it's not just the old thing and the new thing. There is a thing that escapes. We call it the new men. It is a something that is nothing, but it's important to have. Right. So something is also nothing, and nothing can be a something? Didemol. Just like I said. What's this one? Um, well, the Zoop Zoop, yes. Are you hungry? I'm a bit peckish, yeah. Is there somewhere nearby? Yes, yes, you see. What's happening now? Well, it's... Um, the result is lumbly glue. Oh, right, of course. Very tasty. Let's enjoy. Oh, I will. But shouldn't we pay or something? Dadachum. No, we don't really pay here. The food is free? It's not free, because it's all free. We help each other, and eventually it all evens out. No one really keeps track anyway. Wow, that's such a simple system. Dadachik, glad to see you enjoy. Always good to Dadachik with a new limb. Oh, I'm not actually a fish. I'm human. By the way, he's saying he's a human. Fish, human, lumbly glue. Ha, <laughs> I see. Thanks. I can't wait to try it. Bye. Let's eat. This looks surprisingly delicious. Yes, it's very healthy because of the minerals in the pond. And the blah, 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 blah. and then... <clears throat> what? Yes, yum. It's good for you. Oh, are you okay? Oh, sorry, were you? I zoned out, but I'm super okay. There's just so much that is so new. It's a bit overwhelming. Malgaraha. Was that a yawn or a fishy word? Oh, oh. I thought you were watching the. Well. It's like the way the light reflects from the ripples in the clear water on the cave walls and reminds you of a good time with a friend. A bit like now? Precisely. I see what you mean. It's beautiful. I see something similar in the herbarium sometimes, but I never really had anyone to share it with. This is what friends are for. It's so crazy here, Wii U. Amazing, but so different. It's pretty cool that we can understand each other, at least. Yes, I think so. But maybe you can't understand a lot of our things. Oh, and you understand everything human? Well, yes. Humans are so unpredictable and complicated. There is almost nothing to understand. We're like... The all-water tube system? I was going to say fizzy bubbles, but okay. And so, you really don't have money here? No. Okay, that's the one thing I really don't get about humans. Well, it's just a trade thing, but you can trade really easily with it. But some people have more than others. Why is that? Um, some people are more important. Remind me what is important. 
Um, take Moreau. She's cleverer than anyone. We all need her science. Ah, but her science wouldn't mean anything without everyone else to use it. Miu, this is making my head hurt. Then let's go. Next part of the tour. this place? I really couldn't figure it out. It's a library. What? There aren't any books. Not books. Osmo's bow. Will you? I'm gonna need a bit more of a translation. Okay. It's just that... So... Osmo's is... just knowing. That's the best I can do. And Osmo's bow are those jellies. You can just know through them. Wow. So it's like a book you don't have to read. Yes, but I don't really know how they... I mean, how to explain how they work. Okay, cool. So... That's nothing for us to worry about. Come on, more to see. they doing? Aha. Uh -huh. Just wait. They're building something? Oh, or maybe it's going to be a kind of game. Very soon now, you will hear. Oh, okay, I think I get it. <gasps> what an amazing sound. It's nice, isn't it? I call it thrum. The, the song or the style of music? Well, neither really. The way we make music is more... in the moment. So, they don't practice? Is it a jam? I thought jam was for your toast. Yes, but it's also the word we use for when music is, um, improvised. Like, made up there and then. Well then, yes. That, with people watching, is thrum. Right, well, whatever it is, I love it. And I love jam. I wish we'd brought some. Harold, are you there? Oh, hi, Professor. How are you doing? What? I'm fine. Where are you? Just had some lunch. There's lots to see. Harold, I'm quite sure there is. But may I remind you, you're not there on holiday. Ah, I know. The particles. I'll get right on it. Speak to you soon, Professor. Good luck, Harold. Don't do anything I would do. Over and out. We, you, that was Moreau, reminding us to check out the particles. Ah, uh, yes. Right this way. <laughs> Here we are. Oh, it's beautiful. So cool. So, what happened to the other flumalum that tried to go down there? Others? 
What do you mean? Well, hasn't anyone tried going down there before? No. It's just... there. We know the particles can be used for energy. They come up. Why would we go down? To find out what's down there. Maybe you could bring up loads of particles at once. But we don't need more particles at once. Wow, okay. So, it's never been explored? Well, I suppose there was that one Fleming kid who explored it. What? And what did they say? Not much. He never came back. We assume he's happy down there. And now that I think about it, there was one older Flumilim who went or fell down. Maybe they're still down there together. Okay. I think I'm gonna call Moreau now. How do you work this thing? Harold, is that you? Oh, hi, Professor. How are you doing? What? Don't ask me. Have you found the particles? Hi, Professor. Wii U says hi, by the way. And yes, we found them. They're coming from a giant hole in the ground. A hole? Can you get down there? Well, Wii U says a couple of Flumilim have been down before, but they never came back. It looks kind of deep. Okay, don't try and go down there, Harold. Is there anyone or thing there with more information on the hole? There is a kind of library, but... There is or there isn't? What's the problem? It's just that the books are... jelly. So, go to the library. I don't care if the books are jelly or custard. Find some information on it you can bring back. Okay, Professor. Wish me luck. Again, librarian. Shh. I was wondering, do you have any jellies on the crack with the particles? Hey? What are you saying? Oh, he's new. He says, do we have any jellies about the glowing hole? Oh, I believe so. You may need to test a few. I've not really labeled them. Ah, great. So, uh, how do I read them? It's hard to explain, but just hold one close to your head and be calm. And not try too hard. A bit like how memories work. Okay. Is there any way to know what each jelly is about? Just give any of them a go. I'm sure they're all full of great stuff. Yeah! It didn't like being red. Ryu, can you show me? Uh... Um, it's definitely more fun if you figure it out for yourself. I'd love to, but Moreau is probably getting antsy. I think we'd better get back to her before she gets annoyed and puts me on shelf duty again. So, Wii U, how do I read these things? How? Actually, I can't. If it's hard to explain, I'll just watch. Read? I can't understand the jellies. What? But you explained it to me. Yes. Well, we all know the theory. Oh, that's okay. You know, I'm not great with human books. Half the time the letters in a word seem to rearrange themselves. Can I just encourage you? 
Breathe deep. And when your mind feels empty, stick your nose into it and remember what's in the jelly. Sure thing. We'll figure it out together. Let's give this a shot. think it's the one I'm looking for. some interesting stuff about the crack. Wii U, do you want to try and explain? You should try. Practice. Ah, okay. Um, excuse me, librarian? Me? Could I possibly take a book? I mean... A jelly? He says he wants a jelly. You may, but you will have to treat it with utmost care. And find a suitable vessel to transport it in. Oh, okay, and where might one... He asks where to find such a vessel. You could begin by asking around town, in case... Oh wait, never mind. Looks like I've got one for you here. Oh, thanks. He says thanks. Well, I got that part. Bye. Hello, Harold? Professor, I managed to find a jelly that... Harold! What did we discuss about you not being on holiday? No, no, Professor. The books here are jellies. You have to... Well, anyway, I found one. And I had to kind of sniff it. And I have info on the crack. Harold, I know you're excited, but please can you stop talking such nonsense? I'm not. The, the librarian says I can bring the jelly back to the fedora. Just bring the thing back and we'll try to make sense of it. And you. Will do, Professor. Back shortly. It's getting late. Let's go to my place to relax. That sounds fun. But how do you know what time it is? 
Can't you feel the magnetics? The, the what? Feel how? Oh. Well, the slight changes in the glow combined with the slight heaviness we feel in our toes because of the lateness. Okay, I mean, that's crazy cool, but I don't think it's going to apply to us humans anytime soon. Shane. Well, I feel it's tea time. Come on. Meet Howell. Ahoy there, Nautilo. Nice flowers. He says, hello, and he likes your flowers. Thanks, but they're not flowers. They're more, uh, they're more like sponges with a hard lower root. They need water, but if they're underwater, they're not sponge anymore. Um, they're very loyal. I think they're great. Enjoy. He's impressed, and he says he hopes you continue to gain pleasure or satisfaction from your continued interactions with them. He said all that. Yes. Sorry, this translation business is confusing. <laughs> Thanks, Wii U. Anyway, come in, come in. Nice place. Thanks. My home is your home. Take a look around. Is this coral? Yep. Yeah. I found it when exploring outside the cave. Like they probably say I shouldn't. Why would they say that? We're supposed to be happy with everything here. And I am. It's really swell. But? I think that it's also swell to see other swell things outside of the cave. No one else ever leaves? I don't think so. Wouldn't it be sad if we'd never met? Of course, it'd be. I don't even want to think about it. Mind you, I don't want to think about how we met either. <laughs> and what is this? That's Juna. It's a skull? It's a friend. Must make for a one-sided conversation, but okay. You should say hi. Hi there, Juna. Is that a sneaker? Sneaker? Is that what it's called? I've been wondering for ages. It's what made me want to explore further. I wanted to know where it came from. Yeah, it's a sneaker. You wear it on your... Well, not your feet. Human feet. Oh! Do you want it back? <laughs> I don't mean it's mine. Did you show it to anyone else? No. They wouldn't even have cared. For them, nothing exists beyond the cave. But where did they come from? Maybe long ago, from far away. Sometimes we need to get into the waters just outside, but never to go far. They just sit around and stay happy. I mean, that doesn't sound so bad. I know. You know there's more. Happy isn't the same, is it? Mm, true. I guess I haven't been happy for a while. But I guess I can be quite good at calm. Is calm nice? I think no calm is the reason I'm no good with the jellies. Yeah, I don't think about it too much. You just have to think, what does it matter? What does what matter? No matter, no what. Ah, I see. Calm is not all the time, but when you sit and forget about yourself. Hmm. So, I forget I'm with you? But what if I don't remember again? <laughs> I can't say I've ever had that problem. Thanks, Haru. I think I can try calm much better now. 
<sighs> this has been a pretty crazy day. Yes. Let's end it and regain consciousness in a new one. Yeah. Sleep sounds good. Night, will you? Wakey, wakey, how all? <sighs> morning, will you? Well, you probably don't have mornings, do you? Mm, not like on the fedora, but there is still a right time to get up. How long have you been awake? A little while, but then I had a wander around and a nap. Did you sleep well? Yeah, surprisingly well. Feels so peaceful here. Yes. Always something clanging on the ship. Anyway, come on. Submarine time. strange getting back to the fedora. Yeah. It'll be nice to enter it not through a filter, though. <laughs> yes. And we'll be back soon with the others. What do you think the others will think of it here? Huh. The others. Yeah. Professor. Professor. Yes, Harold. I know you're excited. It's more than that. It's wow. Everything. I mean, the jelly books, the beautiful lights. But we used to... And then there were his neighbors. Everyone was so friendly. They had this great way of making bubbles. You don't pay for anything. Please, my boy. You must. I know. I know. 
but they were freaked out by me at all. They were just content with whatever. You could easily just move straight in. Harold! Interesting. Interesting indeed. What? Who? When? That, Harold, is what I was trying to tell you. Oh. Oh, no. I didn't mean... Yes, <clears throat> indeed. I understand. Good work. Hello, yes. Put everything in motion. Don't spare the whip. What? No, of course I don't mean an actual whip. Now get cracking. Okay, wow, here we are. It's been a wild couple of weeks. And Wii U, it's so good to finally meet you. Hello. Oi. John, everything okay? Hmm. Oh yes, it's nothing, carry on. Oh, if you say so. So Wii U, I've heard so much about you. I'm Bridget, in case you didn't know. Okay. Right, well, just so you're aware, I'm sometimes known as the energy bacteria lady. I think it's because I positively grow on you. Oh, great. Uh, I can see we're gonna get along just fine. So is everyone as excited as I am? Sure. Um... Oh, you're wise to be a little circumspect, Wii U. What can you tell us about it, though? It's nice in there. Very Mawagaraha. Very what now? Could you be a bit more specific? You know, this could be the answer we've been looking for. It's like I said in my report, Professor. The Flumalim don't really seem to be curious about it at all. Harold, you wrote a report? Well, just a little one. Howell's right. We really don't know much about it. I think it's probably very nice down there. Right. Well, okay. Let me reiterate the purpose of this expedition. We know the particles are a source of energy, but they're unstable and decay too fast on their own. Expedition? Yes, Wii U. It's imperative we get down there and take some readings. If we can learn where they come from, and or how they're produced, we might be able to engineer a solution. I hope you have more luck than Cyrus is having. Indeed. In the meantime, Bridget will be leading the mission prep from here, while I continue research from back at my lab. And what shall we do? Oh, you're both essential to the plan. We just haven't quite figured out in what way yet. That's okay. Oh, okay. Just keep yourself available, Harold. We'll let you know as soon as we know something. If you're really at a loose end, I'm sure Cyrus would appreciate some moral support. Okay, well, we'll be around. We, shall we take a walk, check on a few people? Sorry, I've got something else I need to do. Huh? Really? Yes. Sorry. Oh, sure. It's just that... Yeah. Sorry. I just got used to having you around. But you're right. I'm being silly. You go to your thing. I'll catch up with you soon. Yes. I'll come and find you as soon as I'm done. Okay. Let's get to it, everyone. Exciting times.
Just one second, Harold. What's up? No easy way to say this. Buddy has moved on. You mean he's finally retired? Who will deliver all the... No. I mean, he's left us. He died, Harold. Oh. Oh, Buddy. You didn't really know him, but he was a ray of light, always running through the dark halls of the fedora. There'll be a funeral and a memorial run in his honor back on the ship soon. I'll be there. See that you are. jog together, and despite his age, he would always give me a run for my money. On our jogs, and often afterwards, over a refreshing fish soup and cold beer, I came to realize something. Buddy was like the lifeblood of this station, surging up and down its corridors, delivering information keeping everyone connected. It's gonna be a colder place without him. But he left me instructions that I shouldn't ramble on at his funeral. <laughs> but instead, I should play a video that he prepared for the occasion. Is it running? Yep, you're good to go. Hi, everyone. If you're watching this, uh... It means I'm not around to deliver your mail and whip you all into shape in person anymore. I didn't want to trouble anyone with writing a long eulogy, so I recorded my own. My life wasn't much to write home or to anywhere about. I grew up while we were still floating around in space. Life wasn't much different, really. If anything, there's more to see out of the windows now. After we crashed, I think people felt sad that we weren't going to see new worlds. But as I got older, I realized that each person aboard the ship was a world of their own. So I became a postman, and it meant I got to visit lots of new worlds every day. Of course, back then we didn't have the tube system, so I had to be a bit more creative with how I got around the ship especially the broken bits. It made me realize the importance of staying in shape and being flexible. Where the body goes, the mind follows after all. And so I wanted to leave this little collection of personal fitness and mind healthiness tips so that even when I'm gone, I keep delivering smiles to you all. Oh, one last thing. I've arranged for my ashes to be delivered to the seas of this planet that has become our home. That way, some little parts of me will always be moving. <sighs> Was that okay? Yep. <laughs> Just fine. Okay. Now, let's get moving. Take a deep breath. It's time to shake off those cobwebs.
Please remember, the all-water tube system will shortly be closing for the night. Get stuck, not stranded. <laughs> Okay, gelatinous-like substance. Contains knowledge, but ambiently. This is not how I expected learning an alien language to go. Oh, oh Professor? Perhaps if I liquefy, I may imbibe the knowledge. Must test ingesting. It won't be poisonous first. Hey, professor, that's not how. Oh, Harold, what did you say? About the books. You don't really read them. They have something to do with your state of mind, not their physical state. Whatever do you mean? With these jellies, you have to be really calm. Empty your mind. Then you can get a sense of what's inside. So, you're saying it's a transcendental, meditative sense memory absorption process? Sh sure. Here, let me show you. Fascinating. Assuming you're not pranking me. I'll try it. Hopefully, I'll be able to research them more thoroughly now that... Is there anything else you need help with? No, but I bet Cyrus would appreciate a helping hand. Or some company, cooped up in that little room. Good idea. I'll go check on it. Enjoy the jellies. Mr. Secretary? What brings you here? How are you finding the cave? It's very agreeable. And it's my new posting. I'm responsible for raising awareness and enthusiasm for the new tube station. Like tourism? Well, something like that. We've not had a new destination to tube to in quite some time after all. In fact, we're running an exciting promotion at the moment. If you buy a monthly ticket, you get a translator airport for free. And, at no extra cost, we'll throw in a personal tracker, so you don't get lost in the cave. Oh, that sounds great and all, but I already have an earpod. Ah, but our earpod gathers valuable analytics about tube usage and cave exploration per person, which we can use to further enhance our cave offering and tourism packages. Don't you want to contribute to a better cave tube experience for all? Um, I think I'll stick with the one I already have. Well, 
I'll throw in a guide if you buy a ticket. I'll take a ticket, but I don't think I need the guide. I kind of already know my way around. As you wish, Mr. Halibut. I'll throw yours into the next person's package as a buy one, get one free offer. Concentrate, please. I am, but this stuff is boring. Hey there, Bridget. Right, uh, okay, yes. <laughs> Kids, don't let me down. Harold, let's go. Lots to do. Uh, got, gotta do it. Harold? Yes. What? There's much to be done. The workstation is going to need a depth gauge. We'll probably need tubing of various sorts. Sonar for the... And of course, thermometer. We'll need a barometer, naturally. And we'll need the computer components to tie it all together. You... you want me to find all of that? What? No, don't be silly. I'm not a monster. I've got the kids helping. It's all under control. Oh, so is there anything I can do? Gee, I mean... uh... hmm... I guess you could help me plug in the cables? Great. Let me take a look. Hey, are you working back there? I'm watching, you know. I've got eyes in the back of my head. Okay, there's one done. Great, keep up that the good makes work. That two. All good so far? Thanks, Harold, you're saving my back. Sorry, Bridget. One of the cables doesn't seem to fit properly. Oh, hey there, Tommy. Hey, Harold. Don't mind me. We won't. Anyway, what does that mean for us, Harold? Uh, it means we're missing an adapter. Uh, it means my inventory is inaccurate. Tommy, I really hope the adapter wasn't in that last lot of stuff you made me throw away. Bridge, I didn't make you throw anything away. I just... Gently suggested you might want to rationalize. Yes, but I'm not going to feel very rational if we can't find it because of your gentle suggestion. Look, I'm sure it's still lying around somewhere in the energy harvest. Harold, could you check there for me, please? It's where I packed everything up, so it's our best bet. Sure, I'll head over. Positive attitude. Love it. Oh, while you're there, actually, we've been having some connection issues with the data transfers. Packet loss and the like. Could you look into setting up a better connection? I can try. It's not really my area of expertise. Where's that positive attitude gone? But, uh, maybe you're right. Perhaps you could get Rafi to help? I'll ask them. I'll let you know ASAP. Great. Good luck. Cool. See you, Tommy. Laters. Traveling with all water. Location nominated. Journey commencing. All water thanking you. We know you enjoy traveling with all water. You're welcome.
coffee? Hmm? Have you got a minute? Probably. Hang on. Um, I have a favor to ask you. We need a better connection in the cave. The workstation. It's really important. The cave? Yeah. We're trying to mount an expedition into the crack. Sounds fun, but not for me. I know it sounds difficult, but it'd really be a big help to everyone. No, it'll just be like last time. What was the last time? Oh, he didn't tell you. Who, who tell me what? Slippy. He asked me to help him with this ski machine. And? I helped. Things didn't work fast enough. He got angry. Shouted. So now I don't do tech help. Oh, I'm sorry. It really won't be like that with Bridget, though, and- I'm happy here. Got my cabinets and tunes. Sorry. <sighs> okay, I tried. See you, Rafi. Psst! Harold! Hey, Felix! What's up? The password is Flatfish! The, the password what? Don't tell anyone. Don't be late. But tell anyone what? L late for what? Where? Felix! Unsatisfactory journey for some reason? Just contact your nearest uh, and all water will make it up to you. What's the password? Um, Flatfish? Bad luck, no dice! Wait, what? But Felix told me. What? I'm the password setter for today. I made it Flatfish just this morning. Well, you didn't tell me. Just let him in, it's Harold. I can't do that, it's protocol. Okay, well, as this week's password setter, I'm telling you, it's Flatfish. Okay, password updated. Uh, so what's the password? Flatfish. Nope. What? But- I'm ah, just messing with you. Come on in. Welcome to the Lightkeeper's official headquarters. Huh. What? You're not the Lightkeepers. We are. That's us. Pretty cool, huh? All the graffiti? The stuff with the rock? That was all of you kids? Hey, we're not kids. We might not be quite as old or as tall as you, but we know what we're doing. Wow. Is this all of you? Pretty much. You're the first older member we've invited. Well then. Thanks for inviting me to the club. Ahem. Not a club. We're an anarcho syndicus hacktivism collective. Oh, of course. Anyway, how can I help? Well, whatever you do, just bear in mind it'll probably go unnoticed. Yava, what are you saying? That's no way to motivate the new blood. I'm just saying, that time in the toilet cubicle, I was there for hours and no one ever- Wait, that was you? Hey, 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 everyone, can we get back on track, please? Sure. I'll just suffer in silence as always. Yes, we've uncovered some pretty crazy facts recently. Normally we'd handle it ourselves, but unfortunately this time we require the help of an adult. One we can trust, not one of them. That's you, Harold. Me? Yes, you. Uh... Our time has come. Too long have we been overlooked by the older yet no wiser of the Fedora. Yeah, so let's watch back the footage Harold helped us record. Everyone, shush! Look, this is the important part, Harold. Freeze it there, Felix. 
Now, enhance. Uh, what? And begin the image. Zoom in. Uh, okay. Is that? Precisely. Well, it's not very precise, is it? Well, what's important is that we believe the time on the watch to reveal the true time. That is to say, all water time, as shown in the video, and true time do not agree. Hang on a sec. How do you know the watch on the shelf isn't just broken or something? Ha! Huh, we thought of that at first. But look at this. See? This one also shows a different time. It must be this watch she's looking for. Why do you even have that? My grandfather gave it to me. He hung on to it during the big watch exchange. He used to say, what's mine is mine. Ain't no corporation gonna take it away from me, whether they all part or no water. And here we have... Yeah, we really don't know what this bit means. But surely it has something to do with the whole conspiracy. We've been had. They've been pulling the wool over everyone's eyes this whole time! Well, now, let's not... What other conclusion is there, Harold? Come on! We thought you were cool! Don't side with the man! We need to reveal this betrayal for the greater good of the station. If we can uncover their motives too, even better. I reckon they're doing it for control. First they'll steal time, and then they'll steal... And then... Well, I think they're planning something at night. And they need more secret time to finish their dastardly plan. Or maybe they're just... Enough theories. Look, here's the plan. We'll split up into three groups. Due to our long-term relationship with Captain Zoya, it shouldn't be an issue to get him involved. Corey and Eve, you'll go up to the Captain's cockpit and take care of getting him on side. Roger! Roger! Your mission is to convince him to put out a diversionary message over the PA. We should get him to say that there's a giant meteoroid heading our way! What? An underwater one? Uh, yeah! I'll leave the detail to you two. The key is to get Miss CEO Busy Chops out of her office. Felix, you'll dash in, grab the package, slip past the... Felix? No, you'll be holding the secretary's door with Harold to stop him from getting involved. Me? I don't know if I should get involved. You're the only grown-up. You're stronger than us. It's a key part of the plan. Don't betray us now, Harold. Uh... Lise, you wait in front of the door to Castle Chop's office. When she steps out, do your Where are my parents routine. I'll hide behind the plant by the door and slide through like a cool gust of wind while she's distracted by your cute misery. Yay! I haven't had a good tantrum in ages! Everyone clear? Roger. Roger. Roger! Roger! Roger? But will this really work? You got any better ideas? I... Uh, I'd probably better not have.
They do all show the same time. CEO Hasselchop, we hereby present our findings and let your conscience be the judge of their veracity. What? I know I promised to keep an open door policy, but I hardly think it extends to rambunctious children. We're not kids. Well, you're certainly not all water employees. Unless you'd like to be. No, we're here to say we know your plans. Here is our theory, deny it if you can. Well, hurry up and get it over with then. I've got work to do. We know we were onto something when we noticed Yavis' watch wasn't slowing down, but didn't match up with the official time. So we made a secret recording of you in your office and realized how badly you wanted that watch back because you were trying to recover the last piece of evidence that all water is trying to steal time. <laughs> how fanciful. But I'm afraid, totally erroneous. I will, however, concede that you fabricated an entertaining story and you deliver it with admirable panache. Just what do you suppose I'm doing with the stolen time? Maybe taking the time for yourself? Uh, Felix? I mean, how would that work? Don't defend her, Harold. Maybe all you adults are in on it. Try to regain your youth. I didn't know I'd lost it. What? How old are you anyway? I'm in my 20s. Wow, I'd never dig that. Come on, how old are you, really? But you're so grown up -y. Hey, I'm not... I would have thought you were more my age. Uh, can we not focus on my age, please? Yes, Miss Castlechop, stop trying to deflect our attention. Oh, you see right through me. Okay, you want to know how it really is. You children have totally misunderstood a fundamental principle. That is, that the Fedora is undergoing a ship-wide energy crisis. If you'd have stopped for a minute to consider that, you may have reasoned the following. The all-water tube system benefits the public. Everyone loves their individualized mobility and would never submit to having those liberties curtailed. So we can't balance the energy budget there. Shortening daylight hours was the next option. But even if people would theoretically agree to that, they'd keep the same routines and use even more energy by keeping their own lights on. So we had to shorten their routines. A few seconds. Just a few minutes every few years, you understand? But it adds up. And we had to keep it secret because it sounds like another curtailing of freedoms. Now we're slowly balancing the energy. People have a better work-life balance. And they're getting more sleep, thus being happier and healthier too. It's all in the name of making the ship and its citizens happier and ensuring maximum freedom of choice at all times. Oh, I see. But what about, I mean, bah! When you put it like that. So now you know the importance of being grown up. I'll be taking this and you'll all be leaving. But now we know the truth. It will all come out. <laughs> Just try it. See what the grown-ups think of your absurd theories. But why don't you... Out now! Secretary 24? Whatever are you doing? Oh, nothing for you to worry about, Madam CEO. We had a small incident. It's all taken care of. <sighs> we need to go back to the hideout, regroup, and figure out our next course of action. Yeah, and get some snacks. And maybe a nap. But time is of the essence. There's nothing we can do right now. And we can't all be seen together. Does this mean me, too? Sure, you're one of us now. But I do have other things to do. Yeah, let's split up for now. See you all back there. Godspeed, Light Keepers. Order, order! Now that we're all here, we need to decide on our next course of action. We've got to expose them. Whatever Castle Chop's explanation, people need to know. Yeah, man. Let the people make their own minds up. Information wants to be free, you dick. But what can we do? I'm not sure. It's not like people listen to me. We've got to go big. Bigger than ever before. No. From what I've read about such matters, a small, well-placed anonymous suggestion is more powerful. We need legitimacy. What if we mount another secret mission? Yeah, because our last one went so well. What about pamphlets? But we could tell the truth through catchy bee poetry. 
Hello, Fedorans. Tonight we bring you an unscheduled but nonetheless timely announcement. Before I hand over to our All Water Press Secretary for the full details, I'd like to assure you that I very much feel, agree, and or condone what is about to tell you all. And I regret that it came to this, this the following, which he'll follow up with now. Thank you, Madam CEO. It's my duty to announce that the All Water Corporation owes you all an apology. Certain details of the past watch and clock replacement scheme have since been discovered to have not met with our rigorous all-water public-facing customer contentment protocols. Those unfortunate past mistakes, which were mistakes at the time on our end but that no one probably noticed, but meant we could theoretically have handled it better, deserve to be made up to you. To prove our sincerity when it comes to taking responsibility for our past, accidental and good-natured mistakes, the person responsible has offered their own resignation, which we accepted only reluctantly and at their great insistence. We'd like to remind you that All Water continues to dedicate itself to your well-being and satisfaction 24-7. Or perhaps it would be simply better to say, always, no matter what the time technically is. We will do better in the future. That's a personal promise. Thank you all for your time. Until next time, we hope you enjoy all Walter's efforts all of the time. Well, I guess that's that then. What? Isn't that a good thing? We've got them running scared. What? What did half of that even mean? That's some jive talk. It was so vague that it kind of covered everything. Uh, it's very clever. It preempted and deflects anything we might do. Checkmate. Oh, well, you know, gang, we gave it our best shot. We kept on fighting. Yeah, and it was real swell of Harold to help. Yeah, we dig that, H-Man. <laughs> Sorry, everyone. I need to sort something out. Anything we can help with? We kind of owe you one. Oh, thanks, but no, it's okay. I've just got to reply to Bridget. We're having connection problems. Did you ask Rafi? Yeah, but they said they couldn't help. Well, you know... We often find all sorts of strange things coming through this carpet chute. Even things that people like Rafi might not want the world to see, if you get my meaning. Yeah? But that sounds a bit mean. Oh, it's nothing personal. But we did find an official document showing Rafi's involvement in the all-water clock swap directive. Yeah, it was like, half shredded. Oh yeah! And didn't the shredder come down the chute the day after? Just take it, Harold. Do with it what you will. We could give him the tape too. I don't know if I want more sensitive materials. No, silly. It's a rock tape. The kind Rafi is always listening to. Maybe that'll convince him instead. Oh, okay, sure. Thanks, everyone. It's been fun. Keep up the good fight, Harold. Yeah. And we'll be watching. No, we won't be. <clears throat> Peace out. Bed. That was a wild ride. 
Madam CEO just wasn't phased, but I've got to give it to those kids. They're really switched on. Anyway, thanks to them, I can hopefully convince Rafi. And another important day tomorrow. I'm beat. Last. Professor, you're never gonna believe what I discovered about- Harold, I hate to interrupt you, but I have serious matters to discuss. I know, but really, this is cool. I mean, important. If you hadn't overslept, perhaps I'd have time to listen to your stories. I came as fast as I could, Professor, honestly. Yes, yes, as fast as only you could be. Anyway, our preliminary external readings and evaluation is complete. Oh, about the crack. What are they? The crack looks promising. Is... Uh, is that it? Of course that's it. It's an alien origin source of a potentially miraculous energy. What more do you want me to tell you by just looking at it? Now we need cold, hard data. Oh, I suppose we need someone to go down. I know I'm not that technical, but I've always wondered what it'd be like to explore an alien world. Wasn't it you that made contact and saw the habitat of the first sentient alien race humankind has encountered? Well, yes, but it's really just a cave, and the Flumalim are so nice, I don't really see them as aliens. It could be really alien down the crack. What is it? Nothing, my boy. I'd love to send you down there. I think you deserve it, even. But not without a probe going first. I don't want you to come back as gas or some other state you shouldn't be in. And if I know you... Here is a probe. Would you do me the honors? Definitely. Can't wait to find out what it tells us. CEO breathing over my shoulder thinking I need help, okay?
destination selected. Have a pleasant journey and a fantastic day. Thank you for traveling with all water. Mr. Frankie? Are you there? It's me, Harold. I know who you are. We're the same, you and I. We are? Yes. Drawn to the dark, the damp, where the outside world can leak into this place we call home. Who? And we both love digging around in filters. Hey, Harold. Tommy, but... I know, I know, but... You know what people would say if they knew what I did down here? I guess, but... They'd say, oh, that Tommy, what does he get from digging around in those filters when he could be minding his shop like a normal shop guy? Uh, I'm not sure they'd say those exact words. Anyway, I was torn, pal. Didn't want to cause you any moral dilemmas. But I'm always telling Bridget what a hoarder she is, like she said in our little argument in front of you. So when I realized how important that adapter thing was, I combed through the rubbish filters and found it. Oh, I see. So you didn't want to admit to her it was kind of your fault. But then, why not just give me the adapter as Tommy? I thought about it. But Filter Frankie can get lonely, you know? And then I realized, who better to share his secret than you, a fellow filter aficionado? I'm honored. You've kept his identity secret for so long. But it got quite tiring, sneaking around, acting shocked at the rumors. There were a few times you nearly discovered me, even. Still, our little secret, eh? Filter Frankie technically operates in the shady side of the law. Tommy, Frankie, your secret is safe with me. You're a good lad, Harold. Filter Frankie remembers his friends. Here's the adapter. Just don't tell Bridget where you really found it, huh? Thanks, Frankie. Tommy, I won't. See you around. got a little something that I think might persuade you to help. Harold, I'm sorry, but didn't I tell you I wasn't interested at all? You did, but that was before I got this. Is that... is... Yep. The famous live recording of Mega Twitch at Werribee Sewage by the one, the only, Hootsu Hong Shiny Prize. The only record of it on the station. How did you get this? Let's just say, with a little help from my friends. Uh, I guess one of the original Fedora crew also had friends in high places to get this on board. Come on, Rafi. You get the record, and Bridget is cool. I promise she won't shout at you. <sighs> okay. 
Fine. Okay, my sweet. I'll be back for you soon. Hold it right there, Halibut. Ah, hey, Major. Frank isn't with you? This is official business, and I haven't yet deputized him, so he's sitting this one out. Anyway, I need to issue you a fine. What? But I've definitely not been on the wrong tube. Not tube related. It's come to my attention that you were part of some rabble-rousing in the Allwater District recently. Oh, that. But surely it wasn't actually breaking any rules. Are rules all you care about? You should be a good role model to those innocent children, not filling their head with tales of adventure and rebelliousness. So I should really fine you for improper supervision of a group of minors. But, Major, it was their idea. Don't try to pass the buck. But still, given the CEO chose not to press any charges, and given how busy I am, perhaps I can let you off with a warning. That would be great. I promise to be a better influence on them in the future. See that you do, Halibut. I don't want to hear another troublesome peep out of you, especially with all our new guests around. Thank you, Major. Best behavior. You have my word. Very good. And tell Frank I say hi. I will. Carry on, Halibut, before I change my mind. Unsatisfactory journey for some reason? Just contact your nearest uh, and all water will make it up to you. Bridget, good news. I spoke to Rafi, and they're happy to help, more or less. Oh, great! I knew we could rely on that silver tongue of yours. Well, it was touch and go for a while. But they should be working on it right now. Good work, Harold. Oh, and Moreau gave me this probe. Ah, oh, lovely. She mentioned she'd be working on it. As soon as we've got everything up and running here, we can let it down. Leave it with me. Got the adapter for you, Bridget. Ah, oh, Harold, you found it. You see what a can-do attitude can do? So, where was it in the end? Oh, uh, just kind of lying around. Lying around, eh? Come on, tell me. My organizational pride depends on it. Well, actually, I found it in the energy harvest. It had fallen down the back of a desk. Hmm. I don't remember packing up around there. Are you sure? Oh, great, the computer is all booted up. Finally, I can get going. You're a star. No worries. Et voila, now we're cooking with gas. Great, so what's next? We can let the probe down. Harold, just think what wonders await us down there. What new marvels of alien life and power. Power? Did I say power? I meant, you know, energy. Power, juice, gas, zoom zoom, pep, get up and... Okay, I see. Yeah, I hope we find something that can help with the troubles we're having. We'll soon see. Or the probe will. 
Hmm. I feel like we should give it a name. This could be a momentous occasion, so the probe should have a momentous name. Harold Proberbutt. Okay, you... really? No, it's fine. That sounds lovely. Is there anything else I could do? Nope. It's gonna take a while to gather enough data for a better picture. Tell you what, though. I imagine Cyrus wouldn't say no to a bit of company. Poor guy is really struggling, I think. Okay, maybe I'll drop in on him. Bye, Bridget. Sorry, what's up? I'm trying everything I can think of, but for weeks, the answer has eluded me. The answer to... What's wrong with my simulation, and what's throwing off the calculations? It's like a going around in circles, because my formulae somehow can't reconcile the timings of each step, and without the proper timing, sploosh! You've got this, sign. If it was easy, it'd me they got to figure it out, not you. Uh... Look. I know I'm not an expert, but sometimes you just need an extra set of eyes. Uh, maybe you're right. I'm out of options at this point. You've got the Herald option. Now, where should we start? Professor, any chance there's been some news? Harold, come here. Did you find something down there? Oh, yes. 
We found particles, non-normative, with fascinating variegation of valency and all sorts. Thing is, deeper you go, denser the particles get, and with enough density, something starts to warp the video feed and probe data recording. Oh, their combined energy gets strong enough to mess with the sensors. Precisely. We can only see past a certain point by measuring the velocity of the energy spikes. But it doesn't tell us much. Why, uh, what does it tell us? Get this. The particles lower down in their original individual form before they interact and bond are utterly unlike anything we've seen before. And when looked at as a group, they resemble the particle structure of pollen. Oh, Cyrus will be pleased. Yes. You're right, actually. Cyrus might be just the right man for the job. He's always been good with flower stuff. Also, do you think he maybe needs a bit of a change of scenery? Perhaps a change would be as good as a rest for him. A rest he can't have, I must add. So, did we find anything else down there? Harold, what's gotten into you? Not like you to be so interested in my scientific observations. <sighs> well... This stuff seems real. Well, since you ask, it seems as though the atmosphere down there contains a number of elements that we've never encountered. Alien elements? Well, yes. From what I can tell, they wouldn't kill you, but there's no telling what other effects they'd have on human physiology or neurology. Is it weird that I want to try some? Yes, very odd. Anyway. We must all get together again near the crack to discuss next steps. Go on, boy. I'll see you shortly. Coming, everyone. We've much to discuss. Yes, much. And plans must be made. We've got to do this by the book, measure everything. The calculations must be exact. I mean, sure, but isn't time of the essence? We'll never get anything done unless we just start and see what happens. If you let me just... Oh, Cyrus. Always with the, if you let me just. Well, maybe if you ever did let me... Um, I was just thinking... If these particles really are alien, then we won't be able to properly measure everything anyway, right? And if these particles really are alien, like you say, Professor, then we're never going to be able to properly measure everything anyway. Yeah. But if we don't make sure we've measured what we can, don't let can be the enemy of is. What? That isn't how the saying goes. Anyway, look, let's start again. Evaluate our first principles. We think the particles will be the solution to our energy issue. The books were a dead end, sadly. Little more than some poetic interpretations. Jean, did the probe data reveal anything new? I'll send you the full data set. This is only a vague hypothesis, but I believe the particles might have some plant-like properties. But the probe couldn't tell us much about what it's like down the cave itself, right? Correct. 
there may be hazards we're unaware of. And we have only the most basic idea of the cave and the connecting tunnel's formation. So, what can we do next that will be a reliable investment of time? Hello all. Sorry I'm late. We you. We were just recapping everything we know. Everything? Won't that take a while? Oh, huh. No, just about the cave and stuff. Oh! <laughs> Anywho, if we want a closer look, we're going to need to get down there somehow. That will involve measurements, a platform, or a hoist. It's systems thinking. Sounds like a job for me. You sure you're happy taking all that on? Sure. Oh, Bridget, we'll need a rope or cable that's durable enough to withstand whatever the particles might do to it, and cope with lots of weight either way. Got it. How hard can it be? Well, we're going to need a certain amount of flexibility in it. Huh, no, I mean, don't worry, it'll be fine. Cyrus, you take over the probe data. With your botanical expertise, maybe you'll find some details I missed. It'll have big implications for the equipment for capturing and keeping the particles safe. That's what I'll work on. Definitely. Won't whoever goes down need keeping safe too? Yes, that is a sticking point. Let's all bear in mind and come back to it when we have more data. Maybe the Flummelin will remember something useful in the meantime. What if I go down? What? Harry? I think we can all agree that isn't going to happen. Yes, Harold, it's too dangerous. Lots of other fun things to do instead, Howell. Yeah, come on, buddy. Don't be crazy. Okay, people. Then we're agreed. To your stations. We've got our work cut out for us. Uh, let me help. With something. Harold, why don't you help me? You're good with the Flummy Limb. You can liaise with Wii U and find out if there's anything they can think of to help us. Okay, sure. Let's go, Wii U. Wii U? Where did they go? Oh, I see Wii U is by the crack! What are you doing? Oh, um, just watching them. They're uh, gabba gurping with a nibble boop. It looks fun. Is Unker Peruko... Are they trying to do something? Well, yes. But only for themselves. Oh, fun, you'd say. Oh, they're playing. Yes, they are. I noticed the fish in the Ubel boops can go further down and still have fun. Oh, the fish is fine when it comes back up in an Ubel boop. Ubel? Down further? And then safe? We, what do you know? Um, <clears throat> what do you know about how they work? How are they made? Not much, but I could probably get a few for you. It's worth trying. If we take a couple to Marode, she might be able to analyze the particle bonding properties and ascertain whether... Or what if we just test them now? What do you mean? No fish has ever cared before, but we could just put one no fish in an ooble, leave one out, put them both down and see how they're both doing when we pull them back up. Will you... How would you feel if I kissed you? You don't have to answer that. Okay, let's do it. Let's do a field test right now. Well, okay. I'll rustle up some ooble boops and a couple of little fish.
Dadachum. Could we have two little fish, please? Of course. Here you go. And could we please have one ooble boop? Sure. Got your ooble pops right here. Knock yourself out. Ah, uh, no, sorry. Not the pops, the boops. Ah, uh, okay. One ooble boop coming right up. The ooble pops are good these days too, though. That was easy. Yes, apart from the misunderstanding. An ooble pop, when we needed an ooble boop, could really have complicated things. Close one then, I guess. So, time to experiment. What could possibly go wrong? Now that we've got an ooble boop and not an ooble pop, nothing. So, what's the difference? That would take a lot of explaining. I'll tell you when we have more time. Okay, I look forward to it, probably. Bridget, we've got the bubble fish. Fantastic. Wait, hang on. What's wrong? Why do you have an extra bubble and no naked fish? Isn't the point to have one of them unprotected? Exactly. But we, you, I mean, forgive me for being obtuse, but... I forgive you. Both of them are protected. What? Look. Oh. Ooh. One plus one equals zero? Don't worry, Wii U. That's rhetorical. Anyway, shall we tie the ropes? Okay, let's pull them out and check the results. doesn't look so good. Oh dear. Poor fish. I really didn't think the effects of exposure would be so severe. But we had to test. One second. Little fish is pretty dazed, but I don't think it's on fish. Yes, it's coming around. Ah. Good news! Well, like Moreau and Wii U said, going down there doesn't look like it kills. But we don't really know how fishy feels right now. True. I suppose we should keep a close eye on it. But it means the experiment was mostly a success, right? I'm happy. So now we can create bigger bubbles that we can go in. Huh, that would be awesome. But we, present company excluded, can't breathe underwater. Cyrus is going to be the best person to make use of these new findings on that front, I think. But then there's the mobility issue. We need to be able to get, stay, and maneuver down there. How about our ropes? Ooh, that would be great. Can you work with me on creating the right stuff? Of course. Great. I suppose I'll start construction of the hoist at the same time. Things are really happening.
Destination selected. Have a pleasant journey and a fantastic day. Thank you for traveling with all water. Destination determined. Now, relax with all water. We know you enjoy traveling with all water. You're welcome. Hey, Cyrus, just me. We've got a great idea for the helmets. Shh! Do you hear that? I, uh, hear a lot of fuzzy static? Yes, sure. But below that... Sai, what should I be hearing? Just let me listen and follow my instructions. We'll get to the bottom of this in no time. Do you hear that? Getting close. Just a little more. It's getting. Oh, nearly. Sounding good. Ah, so close. Careful now. Ah, too far. It's getting distorted again. Just a little more. It's getting clearer. Nope. Tuning out again. Ah, so close. Careful now. It's. It's beautiful. You hear it now? Like those particles are singing together, harmonizing. It's coral. I've discovered the coral particles. Particle choir? Particulars? Do you know what this means, Harold? Whatever is down there, that's the evidence that it has lots of similarities with a plant that I researched in my youth. Didn't you read the book I gave you? You gave me a book? The one I wrote. Phonetic Identities in Adolescent Seedlings. Yeah, provisional title, by the way. Uh, just ended up sticking. So, you know that by hearing this choir sound? How does that relate to... It's all connected. In this very specific sound pattern. This melody. Music is math. Math is nature. John will be happy about these results. Awesome. I can't wait to tell her. Oh, hi, Professor. Hello, you two. What's going on? We were just talking about Cyrus's new findings. The music is plant math. What? Marrow. Yes, I discovered that the audio samples actually reveal an even greater affinity between the particles and sentient plant life. It vindicates my earlier theory, too. The one in my book. That is interesting. So, what's your opinion on the energy container's necessary properties? Hmm, well, it makes me think the container will need the option for water flow and or some kind of nutrition bed. Might need light control and something to attract the particles into it too. And, hmm, given that we don't know the energy potential and given that pollen can... Sigh! Sigh! That's enough to go on for for now, I think. Good thinking, though. I'll handle it from here. Maybe asbestos will do the trick. Say, Harold, didn't you want to tell me something earlier? Uh, before we got swept up in the excitement. Oh, it's the water bubbles. Our experiment was great. We found the bubbles to have protective qualities. The bubble fish came back totally happy. Oh, that is interesting. But did you have a control group? Huh. What? Yes. One fish went down without a bubble. I'll tell you all the details later. Sai, can you work with those bubbles? Find a way to adapt them for human usage? I mean, it's not like I don't have anything else to do, but... Sure. I'll figure it out. Maybe some kind of double hoop glaze with bubble film. I hey, what happened to the other fish, by the way? It was a bit confused by the whole thing. I should see if we can thank it somehow. You always did have a soft spot for fishy friends, huh, Harold? I guess so. Nice to have one that can talk back. Okay, let's get back to it. Good work, you two. Go team!
Thank you for joining me, everyone. And well done on your efforts in getting to this point. Yeah, at least I could help with this stuff. No time for sulking. We're this close to figuring out whether what's down there can really help us get up there. So, we finally decide on who gets to go down there, right? I might be the first Plumilem to even care what's down there. Yes, well, that is to say... Oh, Harold, it was nothing personal, but we already met to discuss that. You decided without me? Oh, without me too, Howell. Yeah, it just kind of came up during one of our standard peer reviews. We are going down as a given, right? And then we decided it made most sense for Bridget to go with. She has the mixture of observational prowess and energy understanding. Oh, I see. But I'm actually acutely claustrophobic, so I had to pass. I wouldn't have been able to trust myself not to freak out down there. Oh, so... Cyrus was the next natural candidate, with his expertise in botany and molecular biology. Oh, it makes sense, I guess. But, just as I was about to accept, I kept thinking of Sunny. And, you know, my responsibility. To my fish, too. If anything should happen to me down there, Sunny would never forgive me. I'm sure your fish would forgive you, though. Oh. Uh, Professor, you're next in line, then. You're the most experienced, after all. Sure I am, but... Harold, are you fooling me? I've only got one hand. Wait. So, if not you, then... We did consider the astronaut, but we weren't sure he'd actually fit. So... so... We're sorry to put the burden on you, Harold, but you're the next best man for the job. I... yes! I mean... yes. I... It'll be okay. No need to worry. We'll all be here looking out for you. I know. You don't have to con... And you have a great rapport with Wii U, so it makes sense. And you've proven recently that you're more responsible than maybe we gave you credit for. Plus, you've developed a real affinity for flumulin processes and mental models. I'll look after you, Howell. Don't worry. I accept! There's no need to be rash. Take a few moments to mull it over. Wait, are you kidding with me now? Harold, you know I don't jape in times of scientific urgency. I meant about telling me, not going down there. We'll give you some extra training before you go, of course. Thank you, everyone. We'll do you all proud, I promise. No doubt that you will. Now, let's get going. Time is still short. Nope, can't hold it in any longer. Bathroom time. Is playing up. Is that a. Hello? Are you okay in there? Hey, it's okay if you're sad, but just tell me if you need medical attention. No, I'm not ill. Secretary? Is that you? Or one of you? It's me, Secretary 24. No, I'm not Secretary 24 anymore. I'm no one. Oh no, what happened? I've off the clock gate. All water needed <laughs> to show culpability. And so I was fired. I've been scapegoated. What? What? But for what? Surely you didn't have anything to do with anything. I know, but, but it's happened anyway. They used that one disciplinary action I had on my file from years ago as an excuse. Oh, I'm so sorry to hear that. 
What are you going to do now? I don't know. Was my career a total waste? All that time, and then just discarded like a used tube ticket. It makes me realize the only people who are really there for you, who are truly loyal, are your family. Well, you have a lot of that at least, right? Yes, that's true. But me and my brothers aren't as close as we used to be. We used to do so much together. Such fun stuff. Well, maybe now you have the time. Yes. Yes, you're right. We should get our a cappella group back together. Mend the rift at last. Warren was right. There is more to life than a steady job. You should do it. Use this new lease of life to solve the feud. I will. You'll see. It's time for a new me. Great. So, now you're no longer a secretary. What should we call you? I'll just stick to 24. Why fix what isn't broken, right? Oh, right. Okay. Go get him, 24. Thank you for listening, whoever you are. It's me, Mr. Halib... I mean, Harold. Well then, thank you, Harold. You'll always be a bathroom buddy to me now. Okay, everyone, listen up. Welcome to Green Thumb Class. You may be wondering what Green Thumb Class is and why you're here at Green Thumb Class. Well, this was originally going to be a private seminar to discuss safe handling of the particles that make up the energy source based on our findings, most of which were my findings, may I add, especially the sound wave element, which... Get on with it, Si! Yes, yes, sorry. But then, we decided it might be fun to open it to the public, as a kind of general botany 101. So here you all are, and thank you for coming. Here are some tips for all of you on handling things with green thumb status which includes the energy particles as well as general flora around the cave. Number one, exert minimum pressure. The cells of these particles and anything else you encounter down there could be incredibly sensitive. Number two, check for root-like material. If taking any samples, keep them as intact as possible, taking care not to sever anything. If you must take a sample, take it from as close to the end of the root as possible. Number three, keep well lit and warm. We still don't know exactly what combinations of environmental factors is preferred by whatever is down there, but we can surmise it's similar to how it already is. For example, if you find something in the dark, don't shine a bright light on it. Any questions? Sai, what happens if you eat the particles? Um, we don't know. Ingesting or inhaling anything down there is not advised. Is there a danger of the particles being shocked by environment change? 
very good question. It's possible, but from what we can tell, they can handle a small degree of ambience change. Can plants think? Can plants, ah, uh, uh, not in the way we can. They don't have nervous systems, of course. But then what does it mean to think? After all, it's just a- Kelly! Follow these basics, and I'm sure we won't have any green thumbs falling off. Harold, those are the essentials, but I'll be staying here to discuss the specifics of boron deficiency in cruciferous veg if anyone is interested in sticking around. Right. For those of you who stuck around, this is going to be a wild ride. Oh, I suppose the house party has started. Well, I'm sure it won't be more fun than my lecture, but it'd be a shame to miss it. better not. Okay. Well? It's okay, Harry. I'm okay. Go have fun. Not too much fun. We've got a real slip tomorrow. Thanks, Mom. See you later, then. So, we got a few things together for you. Hopefully you'll find them useful and or delightful. As a human. Yes. We're still not really sure how your kind thinks, but we've tried our best. Oh, wow. You all... I'm so flattered. You shouldn't have. Go on. Open it. Oh, okay. Let's have a look-see. Oh, this looks great. A nice little fish. Is the fish not big enough for you? No, no, no. It's perfect. Thank you. Okay, up next, some hairpins? Yes, we were told by Chris that these things come in very useful. Where are you now? I mean, thank you. Oh, there's something else in here. I think you're gonna love this one. A rubber hammer. In case I see any moles I need to whack. I'll have it if you don't want it. No, 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 it's all great, thank you. Now I'm prepared for anything. Good luck, Harold. Thanks, everyone. See you soon.
Hey, will you? How? What is the difference between ooble pops and ooble boops? You see, ooble boops and ooble pops are actually not similar at all. One is like a bubble, and the other is like a bubble made to pop. More for fun, uh, not useful. Someone been in here? It wasn't me. Felix, what are you doing here? I could ask you the same thing, bub. This is my room. But how do you really know that? Felix, I don't have time for your shenanigans right now. I feel like there's something important I should be doing. I need some space to think, okay? Sorry. Nah, it's okay. You're right, Harold. There is something important you should be doing. I'm glad you agree. Wait, what? D do you know what it is? Nope, that's for you to find out. All I can do is point you in the right direction. The right direction isn't through a load of ducts, is it? No, no ducts. Just go through there and follow your heart. Okay. Yeah. Don't feel sleepy anyway. Thanks, Felix. Good luck, Harold. Hope I never see you again.
ever wonder... About what? <sighs> no, it's stupid. I shouldn't even bother you with it. You can tell me anything. It's just... Are you sure you want to tell me? No. I don't know. Maybe. Hmm? I just wonder... Have I been useful? At all? What have I really done? This whole time, people have only given me stuff to do when they haven't been bothered to do it themselves. Has there been anything that only I was able to do? So you're helpful. What's bad about that? You make the lives of everyone around you easier. But anyone could do that. I don't think they would give you things to do if they didn't trust you. Maybe. I suppose. But what if we're all doing the wrong thing anyway? Like what? Eating jam instead of wieners? <laughs> no, I mean, that's just personal taste. So, what can be a wrong or a right thing? I don't know. Where's home? Is there a wrong or right place for home? Maybe the fedora is fine down here. What if taking off is the worst thing that we could do? How do you decide anything? It's all so complicated with you humans. Unless... Are we too simple? How does anyone trust they're making the right decision? About anything? I don't know. Maybe we can't know. So why think? But if we don't worry at all... Hmm. Ah. Uh, it's nice. You can do it? Just like that? Hmm. Unless... Maybe... Maybe the whole point of not being sure is that it keeps your options open. If we were sure about everything straight away, we'd never change our minds. No. We would just be a fish swimming in one direction, following the current, happy, but probably missing out on most of the ocean. That's blugalugalugal. I see now. So, true blugalugal is being happy within uncertainty. Oh. I didn't think of it like that before, but I like it. So, have you tried jam on a wiener? Maybe someone should just tell me, like they always do, whatever and whenever they want. Are you being... what is it you call it? Scartastic? It's just so pointless, isn't it? All these crazy ideas for takeoff? What do any of them think it will achieve? 
Why can't we just be happy here? Yes. Some of you humans seem to have no blugalugalugal. Blugalugal. Ah! I wouldn't even be sad if the mission to find an energy source failed. Then we'd have to stay here. Have to? Couldn't you stay anyway? It's complicated. That's why the mission failing would make things simple. But wouldn't it make all of you sad? Everyone treats me like I'm just daydreaming. I mean, what else am I supposed to do when I was born onto a spaceship? The same one I'll die on with no options. A mission that is probably pointless. Decided on by people I never knew before I was born. Who could have spent the money and energy on staying and helping instead? Who probably made half the problems on Earth? Who made my parents? Who... I'm angry too! I'm angry with myself. I didn't consider that. Sorry, will you... What are you angry about? It's okay. I, I'm not sure. I just feel your anger, and it makes me angry that things are making you upset. And I really hate the tube system. The access card is a dumb shape, it smells weird, and it doesn't work properly half the time. Howell, if you had a fish for a long time, and then another fish came to visit, and you could only keep one fish, which fish would you choose? What? Why? Why can't I have both fish? Just because. One fish is going to swim away. Out of your control. I don't know. Which fish is nicer? Maybe one fish can speak. I don't know. It doesn't matter. Maybe you don't even have a choice. Doesn't matter. No choice. These are weird feelings. Is one of the fish going to leave because they're angry at the other fish? Or maybe it's that one of them... Great feeling, too. Everything is bubbly. <laughs> wow. I know what you mean. Like, we're being carried along by loads of tiny floating little bubbles and anything is possible. Like I'm just going to float along. A gentle tide that only wants what's best for us. 
we've come this far. And all we can do is be us and see what happens, right? Don't you worry about where Fedora will go. Yeah, but since all this, I've learned that worrying just makes you get less done. This feeling that things will work out, it helps. Yeah, we've taught each other lots. Humans are funny, but I think life will be more interesting now we've met you. Yeah, and we saved each other. Yes. Wait, it was only me that was hurt. Now there's an exciting future for both of us. Lots of plans. If we explore and find new things, wonderful. If there is nothing else, wonderful too. Definitely. Good things ahead. But something bad might happen one day. True. I hope no bad things even happen to start with. <laughs> Me too. But it'll be okay if they do. We'll deal with them together. I want to try even more strange human things. And I'll get good at Caracal and the arty performances. We could make a garden. Like size. Yes, and make new kinds of jam. Oh. I hope so. I really hope so. Whatever happens to the fedora and everyone, I just know it'll work out okay. And I think okay is enough. would I be? We're in this together, Howell. I know, but sometimes I stop what I'm doing and I think no one ever truly knows how I feel, how anyone feels. So what actually connects us? Growing up on the ship, I thought with so many people, I'd never be alone. But then it's only a few people you want around you and I wasn't expecting to be alone. You weren't alone. I'm scared of being alone. But at the same time, not being alone is scary too. Everyone... What about everyone? Everything. Everyone wants something different from me. Or I need something from them. It's so exhausting keeping track of it all. Oh. I don't really think about the other Flumilim. Wii U is Wii U. To me, and to them. So, you do what you want? Whatever anyone else thinks or expects? No, I think about them, but we are not tied together. But what about your responsibilities? I mean, I can't just run away from it all. Are your legs hurt? No, oh, I mean, I'd feel bad. Guilty. They've been good to me. So what are you worried about? Are you going somewhere? Well, yeah, somewhere. I mean, we all are, right? Together? We're all bound up in everything together. Then there's you 
And me? Oh, look. Is that... Are they... I think they're the two Flumilim that came down here before. They do look happy, don't they? Wow. Huh. Anyway, we are all connected. But you shouldn't be dragged along by someone. True. I affect them too, right? But you also can't do everything alone. True. True. Wii U? Wii U, are you there? Powell! Ah, oh, it's you. What is going on here? I was so worried. Me too. But I also somehow knew I'd find you. Looks like the Dream Team is back together. But where are we? Not sure. But I have a feeling this is the right way to go. Lead the way. We don't have much else to go on. Do you think we are somewhere? I don't know. I don't think we're nowhere. Wherever we are, we're together. And this will make a good story. I hope so. Let's find out how it ends first. You still feel like this is the right way? Yep. Don't you? Actually, yes. It's strange, but something does seem to be pulling me along. Go with the tide. I'm going.
Is it really them? It's you! You came back! You're alive! How are you doing? Oh, Hugh. We came back. And you've got the energy source? Oh, this thing. I... yeah, I think so. This is... you know... How am I doing? Do you realize how much of a scare you've given us? We didn't want to think the worst, but... What were you doing down there? We chased a dragon. Oh, this is going to be pretty hard to explain. Hey. How long were we gone, anyway? Oh, not very long. Oh, that's good. Just about two weeks. Two weeks? It felt just like a few hours, didn't it, were you? I wasn't really keeping track. Sometimes it felt like I'd been down there for a long time, and others it was all new, like we just arrived. Look, I'd love to hear all about this, but it's going to have to wait. Me and a few of the others have been stranded since the tube system and the broadband connection just... stopped. The fedora is silent. We're on our own out here. Oh no. What are we gonna do? We could go to my place for tea. Thanks, Wii U, but I have other ideas. I'm sure we'll figure something out. If we just work together and... Harold, do you think I've been just twiddling my thumbs? The Flumilim, Rafi and I have built a new submarine. It just needs an energy source. What kind of energy? How about the one you're holding? Follow me! Let's head to the entrance lake! Et voila! Our new ride! Super! It looks great! I never knew you were good with machines, too. I had some help from Raffi, but this old gal has some surprises left up her sleeve yet. Mind if I drive? Sure! I'll handle the systems and help you navigate from the back. What can I do? Oh, you get the fun job! Sit in the middle and man the grabby arm! Is that... Uh, the technical term for it? Oh, loosen up a bit, Harold. This is going to be fun! So, we think this vessel will be enough to power it? Let's find out. Slot it in and let's rev her up! It worked! Listen to my baby purr! Okay, let's see. What do we have here? It should all be pretty intuitive, just don't press the eject button. Okay, navigation lever. Got the sonar display here. Throttle handle. Depth adjuster. And... Oh, what's this button to? Oh, that must be the... Yep, the wriggle control. Buckle up, everyone. Let's dive. <laughs> The new sub is so much fun. Great work, Bridget. Thanks. Well done on bringing back the power source. I want to go down there again. It was so weird and pretty. I think once was enough for me. I'd just like to see the underwater rainbow that smelled of jam one more time. The what now? Ugh, still nothing on the radio from Fedora. Why do you think they've gone silent? Could be anything. I'd say it was just all water cutting costs again, but it was so sudden. Something bad happened? Could be. Yeah, trying not to think about it. Maybe we should take our minds off it. Oh, can we play fish impressions? I'd love to, but now probably isn't the time. Oh, hang on. We've got a tape back here.
Oh, that was nice. Do we have any more tapes? Afraid not. So let's play spot the fish. Oh, oh. look at that one. Oh, where? Harold, watch out! Where? I can't see the fish. Ah! Ah! Oh no, poor, poor fishy. Why is it frozen? Is the cockpit glass okay? I can't see any cracks. Well, there are some in the fish. Oh, this isn't good at all. For the ambient temperature anywhere near the fedora to have dropped far enough for this, Yeah, 
No one's been in here for a long time. Wait. You hear that? Is it a ghost? Ha! <laughs> I doubt it. But it does sound like what I imagine an animal to sound like. But that's a silly thought. Anyway... Looks like the power's out. Harold, can you get this hooked up to the energy vessel? There should be some jumper cables in the engine compartment. Sure, I'll get to it. Righto, power is showing up. Just need to flick the master switch and... Wow. animal sounds came from. Amazing! I can't believe they adapted to survive down here. Do you think they bite? It must have been so peaceful for them here. I'm sure they're relaxed. They look so funny and nice. Well, as much as I'd love to get to know them better, we should really try and get access to the arcade security cameras. Yes. Let's see. Oh, I recognize these controls. They're like the ones in the filter station. I guess this used to handle water drainage and filtering. Fantastic. So you can operate it? I think so. It would have been used to monitor the filters and stuff. So if I can just get to the monitor root directory, ask it to change the camera feed, that should do it. Okay, let's see what we can see. Keep cycling through. Ah, there's the Agora Arcade. We should be able to talk to them through the Tannoy system too. Professor! Everyone! You can hear us, right? We can see you! We're in the abandoned core! What's going on? Hang on. Let me see if I can turn on the security cam's mic, too. Harold? Is that you? Can you hear us? Harold, are you okay? Thank goodness! Where have you been? Long story, Professor. But we came back in Bridget's new submarine. The fedora is all iced up. We? Is we all with you too? We use here too. Nice to see you again, Professor. You three have got a lot of hoods, but making us all worry and they're just turning up unannounced like this. Professor, are you all okay? Are you trapped in the arcades? What's going on? Oi, Faye. Yes, we're stuck here thanks to Schlipmeyer. He's had us all fooled from the get-go. Played us for real schmucks. All along, he's been planning to freeze not just the area around the ship, but the entire ocean. He told you all this? Yes. Over the tannoy, once he'd hidden himself away somewhere, he said it's always been his dream to create the largest winter sport amusement park in the universe. Freeze the sea. Winter sports? From the get-go? All along? So, Slippy is here? He's rootling around, asking me all kinds of questions I don't want to answer. Stigmeyer, will you please present Flo and Go to the audience, please? Please witness the future of Fedora. Like all the best things in life, it seems simple at first. Then the more you know about it, the more ingenious and brilliant it becomes. It's all a lot of hot air. I'm going to freeze the water directly under the fedora. Given water bodies usually freeze from the top down, I don't know. It all seems a bit fishy to me. I thought you said it wasn't a vote. It's not. I just happen to agree with them. I'm making the coolant procedure more efficient than ever. It's going to be able to cover a lot of ground. How does your AC technology work? Maybe I shouldn't tell you every part of the day. Eh? I need to finish hooking up these tubes for some tests. Are you going to help me, or just stand and watch me suffer? Please witness the future of Fedora. So you see, that's the slippy difference. Oh my god, what? Why? Where is he now? 
Not sure. When we all got together here for an urgent launch update, he disappeared and activated the security locks. Oh. You okay, Howell? You went dreamy for a minute there. Oh, yeah. Thanks, Wii U. So, Moreau, what was the urgent launch update? Harold, please. The update was a ruse to get us out of the way. We were never meant to take off with his procedure. He babbles something about how we'd just die in traveling through space, and we may as well have fun in our lifetimes. My god! Can he really do it? Well, he's been developing the tech under our nose, of course, and we've got the raw materials all around us. He said we'd all thank him once the slippy ice paradise was ready. Can you believe it? Okay, we'll get you out of there somehow. Just hold on. Hold on, Harold? Really? That slippery little... I guess you've tried breaking through the revolving door? Yes, you nincompoop! Chris tried already! Even though I warned him, it's security glass, and no amount of handsome muscle would get through it. Listen, you two. You should be able to access the security shutters and the door's control mechanism through the terminal computer. Okay, let me see. Maybe if you try the... It's just fiddly. I'll figure it out. Well? Sorry, Professor. The door control interface is weird on this terminal. It's like, you click one thing, and it does the opposite. Then there's a pop-up, and you have to click again. Weird, Harold? You're looking at classic quality tech. The newer consoles might be fancier, but you have less manual control. And because everything is integrated, it's a nightmare if anything needs replacing. Sorry, Rafi. Can you help talk me through it? Uh... Fine. Now what are you seeing? Oh, More pop-ups! Stay calm. Just close them. Now what are you seeing? There are two big circles. Looks like a cassette. Okay, great. There should be a small box in a circle connected by an arc in the lower left-hand corner. Click them to control the big circles on the- Oh, looks like the bar in the middle is filling up. Good. Keep clicking the box in the lower left until the middle bar has filled up. Keep- It's finally fully filled now. Ah, the bar is unfilling. It's finally fully filled now. Okay, so click the small circle on the left until the box underneath the big circles on the right. When I click the little circle, the big circles move. The box is highlighted now. What are you seeing now? A screen with the diamond shape on the left. Great, nearly there. Click the top of the two buttons on the right. Click the top, and then? The box in the middle of the screen should be active now. Click the sl Clicked. The door segments on the left should be animated now. They are. Did I do it? Go to the rightmost tab on the top of the screen. What are you seeing now? A screen with a key on one side. Great! Choose the REM cup rads around the 50 range. Done. Click Go 8. Click Section W7 and open it. Done. But nothing is happening. Did you press the enormous key button? Aha! Uh -huh. You did it, finally. Good job, Harold. Has that done it? Well done, Harold. My pleasure. Okay, everyone. Let's get to the energy district. If Slippy is doing nefarious science, he's bound to be doing it there. Oi! The tube isn't working, of course. 
Doesn't look like they're having much luck with the tube. Harold, can you still hear us? We're going to need you to look into why the tube is down. Trot, now that isn't going to be something we can fix from here. You two, do you think you can take the sub and try and see what the problem is from the outside? Yep, we know how it handles now, right, Wii U? Yeah, sure. Let's rev her up. Great. I'll stay here on the radio and help liaise. Okay, let's go. I'll do the grabby arm. Good luck, you two. Be careful out there. Back there, Wii U. Oh, it's okay. But it seems quiet without Bridget. Hey, what are you saying? I'm still on the radio, remember? Oh, ah, yes, much better. What do you think of all this drama? I bet none of the flu of them ever have any crazy schemes. Oh, yes. Oh, it's very curious. It makes sense that if Slippy loves snow swords, he would want to create a snow world. But it doesn't seem like he checked with everyone if they also loved snow sports first. That's a very balanced way of looking at it. But I wonder, why didn't he tell anyone? Or why didn't anyone realize he was so sad before all this happened? Good question. Humans can get very wrapped up in their own stuff, you know. And sometimes people hide their sadness because they don't know what else to do with it. Are you sad, Howell? No. Thanks for asking. No, I'm not. Maybe I used to be. I'll be sad if we can't stop Slippy. I think all the Dremelin would be sad. I'm going to do my best with the grabby arm, though. It's going to be fine. We'll figure something out now that everyone is working together. That's the spirit, you two. Hey, even Raffi is helping. I am still listening, you know. Well, good. But once this is all over, you all definitely owe me some peace and quiet. It's a deal, Roth. Okay, looks like we're approaching the tube exterior. Bridget, we'll check out what's wrong first. Great, keep me posted. Okay, Bridget, you reading us? Loud and clear. What's the situation? We've arrived outside the Agora Arcades. It looks like the actual transportation tube is disconnected. Maybe the ice broke it somehow. Trot! I guess the sudden change in pressure from the ice must have displaced or warped some of the connections. How bad is it? Well, the good news is the tube itself is in one piece. So, if we can get a good grip with the grabber, we should be able to reattach the main tube and lock it back in place. And the bad news? Oh, well, there isn't any extra bad news. Oh, good. Well, get going. But be careful, Wii If the tube cracks, the whole thing will be unusable. I'll take super care of it. Okay, let's do this. I'll get us into position now. I wonder how Team Moreau is doing. Well, from what I can see, they're starting to get into the tube, one by one. Chris is doing push-ups while he waits for his turn. Where are they going? Well, now they're telling me that the direct connection isn't working for some reason. Oh, no. What do you think is wrong? I'm not sure. Could be a few things. Plus, there's the potential side effects of all the ice to consider. Hmm. Seems like it was only the direct path to the energy district that was down. Maybe a malfunction in the tube's control panel? Oh, so what now? They're en route to the central station now. They'll try again from there. Okay, keep us posted, Bridget. Wee, that was really impressive grabby arm work, by the way. Thanks. I just thought about holding on to a slippery fish. Oh, 
It seems like the road via Central Station is working out for them. They're on their way now. All this makes you realize how reliant we are on those tubes to get around now, huh? What did you do before then? Well, we didn't move around as often, and I suppose we only went to places we really needed to. So you built tubes to move more often to places you didn't really need to go to? Uh, yes. It is fun zipping through them, though. The whoosh sound, it takes no effort. Uh, yes. I think I'm glad to have them even with the fines and all the delays. Ah, uh, good timing, you two. Team Moreau has arrived now. So, what was the problem with the tube? Maybe it was just the electronics being affected by the ice? Whatever it was, it doesn't seem to be affecting the whole system, which is a relief. Energy harvest is locked too! Seems like Slippy has barricaded himself using the lockdown routine. Yes. And the door can't be controlled over the computer system due to the all water emergency protocols we baked in. So it can only be opened from the inside? If he's in there doing something slippery, we've got to stop it. What are we going to do? Did we ask him? Even if we wanted to. The emergency protocols block out the security cans and tannoy. To protect potentially sensitive all-water corporation activity, he totally isolated himself. Oh, must be nice. No interruptions. Wait a sec, Bridget. Didn't you tell me the agricultural district and the energy harvests were connected? Ooh, good thinking. Yep, by the retractable conveyors. If memory serves, the one that connects energy to agricultural is near the back of the core. Rafi, what do we do next? You need to lower them first from their rooftop storage, then power them up. How do you know all this stuff, Rafi? I did have a life before the arcade deal. Anyway, ask me about that later. You're gonna need to align the bells in a continuous path so you can reach the opening that leads to the harvest. Okay, doesn't sound too hard. Let's go, Wii U. Such teamwork. I'm like a proud mother hen. Okay, you two, it's time you got going to the energy harvest. You going to be okay here? Yep, I'll stay here to monitor the security cameras and oversee the situation. Mm, I hope it's better to watch than those videos Howell showed me. Everyone shouting and then kissing straight after. Leo, shh. Just stay on your guard. And when you see Slippy, tell him I always knew he'd slip up. Uh, okay, we will do. going to find at the end of this. What are we going to do at the end of this? You're going to get Slippy. That's one way of putting it. Well, I'll think of something. It's always me who has to get his hands dirty. Slippy, we're here. It's... Slip, Maya! I can't even count how many regulations you've breached. Halibut? The door? Harold! Will! Everyone! Look, let's not be hasty. If I could just show you my plans, I was only trying to... I'll show you a plan! Ooh. Eesh! 
God, shit, my hand! Well, that settles it, I suppose. Thanks, Chris. Is he okay? Gosh, I was overcome with emotion thinking of the children. I hope I didn't overdo it. Please no one tell them about this. Chris, relax. It's over. And so is our chance at launching after wasting all this time. Well, may as well spice things up a bit in the meantime. Relaunch Shaft Alpha? Whatever do you mean, Professor? I mean that the solar winds are due to begin again, and soon. Too soon. After these shenanigans, we simply won't have the requisite preparation complete in order to meet the safe launch window. To say nothing of repairing the damage, Slippy's icy debacle probably caused our sensitive instruments. Or can't we risk it? What's the worst that would happen? Well, if we launch late, we run the risk of the solar flares crippling the ship, like last time, and tumbling back into the ocean. And there's no telling if our next landing will be so lucky. And if we launch on time? My calculations are nearly complete, but if we time it just a second wrong, we might sink deeper or use up our remaining fuel just to move a few miles away. Mm. And even if your calculations were already done, what with the all-water time theft, it'll probably be late by now anyway. Time theft? Speak sense, Harold. I tried to tell you that day in your lab, but we got distracted with the probe. Me and the light keepers... I was gonna tell you I joined them. They're a bunch of teenagers. We found proof that all water were shaving a bit off every hour to help with the energy crisis. So we had even less time than we thought all along. What are you talking about? How and why do you shave an hour? So we have to do less work, and to save energy. And, well, actually not every hour, only the ones in daytime. By now, apparently, it adds up to two full hours each day. How? But we would have noticed. Ah, but we didn't, because the introduction of all-water digital time, and they controlled the time in tiny little bits so it would always feel normal. So, all water fooled us more than Slippy, and we must have... Wait... Saving on daytime? Ah! Harold, you wonderful, beautiful schmuck! If what you say is true, and these days the truth is stranger than one of your little head stories, then it's exactly the opposite of what you think. We have more time than ever. We do? How does that work? Think, Harold. If what we perceived as a day of 24 hours was actually only 22, that means that we haven't actually reached today's date yet. Now, let's see. All water digital time was introduced eight years ago. Cyrus, check my math. Well, even if they were shaved up to one, then two hours after a few years, we should have more than four months left until the launch window ends. Ha! Much as I love it when you're wrong, that means... My calculations were correct! But time was wrong! And it explains why we thought the space bacteria would degenerate faster than modeled! Oh, if we had just done the experiment at night time! Oh, wait! Then... And that means... And I was so blind! Time... All along! It's about time, right, Bruce? It's true. This is a matter of urgency. Time is of the essence. We know we were onto something when we noticed Yavis' watch didn't match up with the official time. And what time do you call this? Party time. The time is... I know what the time is. Time is of the essence. First time's the hardest. At the same time, a stitch in time saves nine. Four at the same time is quite a feat. And time is running out. In the meantime... We don't have time to put you on a proper routine. But maybe this whole time... All water is trying to steal time. Just what do you suppose I'm doing with a stolen time? Maybe taking the time for yourself? Now, if and when the time is right... We might even have some time for ice skating. Why not give them all the time? Your first time at Quick Soup Collarfish? This will be the last time I explain it to you, so for once, pay attention. There's no... Time. 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 All that time. time. We're going to need a few words with the Madam CEO if we're to get the exact numbers of when and how much time they've stolen. Speaking of which, has anyone seen her? We didn't see her on any of the cameras. Nor Zoya. Do you think they escaped being trapped? Unlikely. 
They were probably incapacitated by Slippy as part of his plan. They could be anywhere. We'd better split up and find them. Maybe we should start in the Allwater District. Why don't we just ask him? I, uh, don't think he's an A, Tommy. Look, I'm sorry, okay? I was just so overwhelmed. How was I supposed to know he'd take it so badly? It's okay, Chris. At least he didn't get away. Cyrus, let's go with Harold and Wheel to the All Water District. Major, I imagine you'll want to stay with Slippy. Everyone keep in touch via PDA and don't leave any stone unturned. Let's go. Oh, and Bridget, can you tell the others over the Tannoy system to search whichever area they're in? It's them. They look fine, and not at all hungry. Do I look fine? Well, I mean, it could have been worse. Those snacks are tasty. Yes. I could have been tied up with you. Can someone please tell me what is going on? Slippy engineered this whole hoax. He was never really working on a relaunch procedure. His plan was to freeze the planet into a giant ski resort. How absurd! Professor, I expected better from you. So... so there's no relaunch plan after all? I can't believe it. I'll never fly this thing. Madam CEO, I could say the same about you. We know all about the time hoax, but it's still imperative you clear up a few things. What good will it do? Still, I suppose it can't hurt at this point, and you did untie me. Fire away. Firstly, when did you start the time-skimming process? About eight years ago. For the good of the ship, of course. And how much did you shorten the days? Well, we started with 30 minutes, just letting the clocks run a tiny bit faster during the daytime. Every two years since then, we made gradual transition to another half an hour shorter. And I thought it was my fault those plants were growing slowly. Cyrus, stop lathering about plants and run the math for me, please. Okay, so that means 365 hours in the first two years, 730 to two years after that, then 1,095 hours, and then 1,460 hours, which adds up to 3,650 hours. So we have 152 days left or what we think of as today is in fact 152 days away. Whoa, that's a lot of time. But how come none of us noticed? Aha, uh -huh. this is the clever part. We tapped the shifts to the summer winter time changes. People's circadian rhythms always go a bit haywire around then anyway. Subtle. No. So, we have time, but no procedure after all. I wouldn't be so sure about that. Yes, we kind of worked on a thing. A thing? Kinda. A secret backup relaunch procedure. We were never taken in by Slippy's showmanship, and sorry to say, Madam CEO, your blind trust in him. So it took me a while, but I got a little something theoretically up and running when I was stymied by the time theft messing with my calculations of velocity. That's why my simulation failed that day, you know. We even double-checked, triple even, in everything. Well, I won't forget your flagrant distrust in me anytime soon. But I suppose your rebellious streak has borne some interesting fruits. You must explain this procedure to me so we can work on the press release. So we really might still launch after all? Yes, yes, funnily enough. There'll be plenty of time for all that. But now, I need tea and a nap. Yeah, it's been a crazy day. Tea nap sounds good to me. Spicy tea. Spicy tea? Uh, come on you two. Let's leave Zoya and the CEO to get some rest. I'm sure it was exhausting eating all those snacks. We can all meet in the morning to go over next steps. Okay, I suppose we can postpone the agenda until then. I imagine there will be much that needs doing, including some serious PR damage control.
Hello, my boy. Hey, Professor. How are you holding up? Just fine, just fine. Preparations for the relaunch have gone swimmingly. Ah, great. So they're nearly done? Yes. We're really just putting the finishing touches on now. Wow. Can you believe we're about to try and take off after everything? I knew we'd figure out a procedure. But I would never have guessed at what it took to get there. Are you excited to see space again? Yes. But that's not to say I won't miss this place. It had a certain watery charm and plenty of scientific curiosity. But you know, I'm getting old. My real wish is to step foot on real ground. Yeah. It was nice to be outside of the fedora in the cave, but I suppose that's not what you're thinking of. Hmm. Indeed. I'd like to see the sky. But enough about me. How are you feeling about leaving Wii U and the Flimmelim? I know you grew close to it all. Yeah. I'm gonna miss Wii U. I'll miss it all. But this is our path, right? I think so, my boy. You'll always cherish the time you had with them. But don't you want to continue the mission? Get back to finding a real home? Yeah, it makes sense, I suppose. Do you think we will? I'm not sure, but what do we stand to lose? True. True. Have you said goodbye to Wii U and the Flimmelim yet? Not really, no. Well, no point putting it off. Saying goodbye only gets harder the longer you leave it. And so send them all my regards. Yeah, I know. I know. And Harold? Yeah? You'll miss Wii U, but over time, it does get easier. You'll be busy once we're back on course. It'll feel like a whole different life. I know. I know. Unsatisfactory journey for some reason. Just contact your nearest uh, and all water will make it up to you. Travel in style with all water. You've arrived. Have you checked your pockets before leaving? Excited. I mean, it is exciting, but it's gonna be so hard leaving you behind. In this place, I'm just... Yeah, maybe we'll find a new home out there, but also, maybe not. At least, not in my lifetime. You know? I don't know. You will, or you won't, but at least you will have the chance. <laughs> and of course, I will miss you. We have true Simba. We all will. But we're just happy we could help with the energy and everything. Yes, we couldn't have done it without you all. And I couldn't have done it without you, Wii U. And I would probably be a cold non-Wii U if you hadn't helped me get better. Everything has changed since knowing you. It will be hard to remember Tidamo now. Maybe I'll go exploring a new part of the ocean. <laughs> Can you believe how lucky we were to even meet? I always thought this luck you all have is a very strange thing. You do a thing, or you don't. But what if a thing happens to you that has nothing to do with your own actions? I don't understand. 
Life is like a tide, you know? It's not always obvious where a tide comes from or is going or how it connects to other tides. But if you are you, you go with the tide or you go against it. Sometimes it doesn't matter if you try not to go with it. Sometimes it does. Wii U, the fedora is nearly ready to launch. This is going to be the last time we see each other. I know, Howell. I don't know what to say. It's okay. Remember, Simba. We'll always have it. Thanks, Wii U. We will. Hope you have good tides. And you, Wii U. And you. No, it's not crazy. It's just you. 
I would love it. But are you really sure? Will you miss everyone else more than you want to stay here? I'm sure. I've always gone with the tide, but now I want to break out of it. Choose a tide for myself, and not the one that leads up into cold, empty space. It's the first time I've ever really been sure of anything. I believe you. You found your Lugalugalugal. Yeah. Lugalugal Simba. Lugalugalugal Simba. Hey, Professor. There's something I need. Ah, Harold, how did it go? Well, fine, but... Great. We don't have much time. I could do with some help sorting the final, final preparations. Jean, I'm not coming. Okay. It's only natural you're emotional. I suppose I can finish things up by myself. No. Professor, I mean, I'm staying with Wii U. Oh. I'm sorry. Can you understand? Harold, I've grown terribly fond of you. But if I've learned anything about you, it's that you always defy expectations one way or another. So, you're not angry? Angry? Dear boy, I'm delighted. I will miss you like I miss my left hand. But if you finally found something you feel strongly enough to shout Jeanne at me, then I'm happy for you. Thank you. I'm gonna miss you too, Maron. You've always been there for me. I wouldn't be making this decision if it wasn't for you. In a nice way, I mean. Ha! <laughs> I know what you mean. Have you thought it all through? Do you need any help with the, uh, practicalities? Not really, but what is there? I'll just take a few of my things. The Fluolim have all the materials I'll need there. I'll get settled in no time, I'm sure. Well, I guess this is goodbye. Yeah. Guess it is. Be safe, Harold. Wish us luck. I'll do one better. I'll wish you good times. <laughs> Very funny.
Thank mm-hmm. you.